Uh, good evening. I'd like to uh, call a, the meeting of the Whitley Select Board to order. Uh, it is 7:34 on the 27th of June, 2018. Uh, first order of business is to approve minutes from the June 13, 2018, and June 21, 2018 meetings. I would move that we approve the minutes of the June 13th and June 21st meetings. Second. All those? Aye. Aye. Good. That one was easy. Um, comments from the public before we go to the hearing? Nothing? Okay. Um, the third item on the, on the agenda tonight is the continuation of uh, public hearing that has been continued. This is the third continuation, or the, the third meeting. Uh, on the topic of the alcohol license transfer uh, from Demetrius Constantopoulos uh, Castaways Lounge to Whitley Investments LLC uh, at 226 State Road in Whitley. Um, we have talked many times about, or the past two times, about how many of these issues are interchangeable in terms of granting of licenses, etc. We will be going through a series of conditions tonight, and some of those conditions are germane to one license and not the other. Some of the conditions we feel may be germane to both licenses, uh, and we'll explain why that is the case uh, later. So, but we've tried to divide out, with the help of, of Brian, uh, we've tried to divide out our initial thought as to what conditions were most germane. Uh, as we all know, we're going to deal with the alcohol license transfer first. Um, before we do that, I do want to thank the potential new owners. I want to thank the Zawinski family, and I want to thank the Boussier family, who I don't see in attendance for having what I've been told was a, a, a pretty decent meeting. Um, I haven't had a chance to talk with you guys about it, but the reports are that it, it was it was productive at some level. Um, so I would just want to thank everyone for taking the time and, and taking this seriously to, to do that. Um, we are going to decide tonight whether these licenses are the the alcohol liquor license to be transferred and um, the entertainment license to be to be new. Um, I think what makes the most sense is to discuss, should they be approved, what conditions would go along with, again, each of those licenses. And so, unless Brian or our council thinks that I'm not doing this correctly, and I think Brian's about to say I'm not doing it correctly. Well, well the public hearing is still open right now, so um, I don't know if you wanted to, to see if there were any final comments from the public. That the board would consider, or, okay. or what you want us to do at this point. That's that, that's fine by me. Are there before we talk, start going through the conditions? Are there any other final sort of umbrella comments that anyone would like to make? I guess uh, is is you're saying is there any final comments? So we're not allowed to. Oh yes, you are. Just not. You're going to be able to comment on the conditions, but if there's anything sort of 30,000 foot level you'd like to say before So we you're make. asking about conditions, which makes it sound like you've already approved it. No. Okay, so I guess I'm not following that. It sounds like the conditions are based <clears> on, <throat> we'll give you, we'll grant this, your permission for this, based on these conditions. Am I wrong? My, I'm going to speak for myself here. These are things that would help form opinion, um, not exclusively form opinion, but they would help form opinion uh, based upon the answers that we receive. Okay. So the last question, and it's really it is a question, that is, this is where I, I, I guess I am a little, uh, this isn't my forte. So we all agree that this is a, an existing non-conforming lot business you know, with parking, with everything else. Is that true? 
I the attorney over here is shaking his head. I think so, yeah. Okay. Again, I, you'll, uh, I, I looked okay. to the people who were smarter than me in the room. Okay, so based on if, if there is, or when or if there is a transfer, does it need to become compliant? Conforming. Conforming. No. That would be a question for No, I, in my, and I'm Jeff Blake. I'm from KB Law uh, Town Council. And the, the use that is protected, first of all, it's under zoning, and it's not necessarily <clears throat> germane to this hearing, although there is some overlap. But your, your question is um, when a pre existing non conforming use is sold, is that, does that suddenly uh, the, the uh, protections under Chapter 48, Section 6 dis disappear? And the answer is no, they don't disappear. Now, there is, and this is strictly zoning, um, to the extent that the use becomes expanded, altered, or changed, there is another, there is a process under the Zoning Act which would require the applicant to then come before, um, come before the ZBA to expand, alter, or change that use. <clears throat> okay. Well, I think the, the other thing to keep in mind what you said, Jonathan, and, and what Joe was referring to about approving, the assumption that this was being approved, I guess I like to explain that we're, we're thinking about conditions that would be relative to the approval of it. And if that's what this board decides, uh, that would be our position, but it would be up to the applicant whether they still want to pursue that development. I mean, they could back out and say, no, we don't meet all these conditions, or we don't think they're reasonable. And then I guess we're, we're back to another drawing board. Well, what is reasonable? Or what do you want to do differently? So, I I think that's that's the way this is going to going to proceed. I, I, again, I think that the answers that we receive are going to come in, will play a part in any final decision that this board makes in terms of granting uh, one or both or neither of of the licenses. Um, but the conditions are are part of that decision making process <clears throat> from my perspective. Oh. By any chance, when you start to go over the conditions, will you be dis will, will you discuss the policing needs, additional needs that will exist with this establishment? That's on the list. Okay. Okay. Um, so we're going to start with the liquor license. And again, we separate the two, but I understand everyone's going to be thinking about them sort of as a, as a, as a combined effort, uh, because I think we all understand that that I'm going to, it's a leap of faith that you guys are more interested in having them both as opposed to just the liquor license without the adult in our hand. <coughs> but that's entirely up to your, your decision if that's where it goes. For the record, they go together. Yeah. Okay, even though we have to deal, yes. Okay, exactly. that's fine. Okay. Um, and you guys jump in whenever you want to, because the, 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 this is new territory for us, as everyone knows. The first uh, condition on the, on the alcohol license is the premises shall be open at all times to inspection by any police officer or constable of the town or by any state police officer. And if people want to raise their hand and ask questions, jump in so we're not losing the... Just to clarify, those are the existing... The these are the existing, I'm sorry, these are the existing. No person or persons under the influence of, or, of intoxicating liquor or other intoxicating beverage or having the appearance thereof shall be granted admittance to or be permitted to remain in or upon any of the premises described in this license. No dialogue, gesture, song, language, or concert, conversation of any description which is directly or indirectly obscene, lascivious, or suggestive shall be permitted to be used by any persons or per, person or persons while in or upon the premises. Gaming of any description, games at which a prize is offered, any game where money is exposed as a prize or doc or an inducement, wheels of chance and jungle boards are prohibited. <coughs> Private dining room, booths or enclosures for the accommodation of less than four persons shall not be permitted and not less than four persons shall be allowed or permitted to occupy any such room or enclosure. Rooms used for dining rooms and for dancing shall be lighted as to render it possible to distinguish any person by every other person therein at all times. 
The license will be suspended for non-compliance with any of the laws of the common of this commonwealth relating to this particular establishment and may after hearing be revoked. Non-compliance with the provisions of any of the above regulations will be sufficient cause for suspension. Again, those are the current conditions um, that the current owners are supposed to live by. Um, conditions recommended by our council. Maximum seating capacity, this board needs to decide what the maximum seating capacity of, of the establishment shall be. Um, right now, I believe the occupancy, overall occupancy was 90, if I'm not mistaken. 95. 95. 95. Is that seated or standing or both? Because you can fit more people into a room if they're standing as opposed that's, to... That's, that's based on state law. Just state law. So it's not, it's not based upon, there's no... Again, I haven't been in the in, in the building. Are most of the people, if you had 95 people in there, would they be seated or standing? Seated. They'd be seated, okay. Okay. I'd like to ask, uh, Brian, has our uh, fire chief weighed in on this and see, have you heard anything from him on what the occupancy should be of that building? No. I think they do the annual. Okay. It has to be annual. It's yeah. annual. There's an okay. annual occupancy permit from the building inspector. Okay, and that's what it is today, is the 95. 95. And the fire chief signs off on it. Fire chief signs off on it. Yeah, that's my question, yeah. So he is fully aware of this. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> to your recollection, have there ever been 95 people in the building all at the same time? Not that I can think of. Okay. Okay. My only concern with 95 is that Let's assume that a good, then you can take issue with the assumption, that a good portion of the people who are going may show up alone. Obviously, the parking lot can't accommodate 95 cars. And I'm not assuming that 95 individuals would come all in separate cars. But if the parking, as it currently has been discussed, is 60, and I think that's a little high. We want to we want to look at that. Um, the, the 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 capacity of the building doesn't allow for that kind of parking. So I'm I I just want to raise that the, the the two numbers don't seem to be consistent. Well, I think you're. If I may say, you're you're assuming people are going to drive individually in a car. I, I guess I've seen buses there, uh, tour buses with. And you handle anywhere from 10 to 25, 30 people. I've seen that in the parking lot. So, I mean, if you get two or three of them buses, you may get up to the 95. <coughs> Am I correct? You have tour buses that come through from other other areas. I wouldn't say they're tour buses. Well, I don't know if you call them tour bus or people on a bus that come and, and they stop there for a time period and then they leave. So you're getting more than one or two people in that vehicle. What we usually get is maybe like a stag party. Yeah, right. Five well, or six that, guys. Right, right. That's what no I'm saying. No more than I, ten. I, right. Ever. But it's not like the tour buses that go to Yankee Camp. No. Right, right. Well, well, that's what I thought. I, I was like, I've never seen that before, yeah. If, if I may just briefly, Mr. Chairman, um, I, I think what, what you're doing here, I understand what you're trying to do, but I, I mean, you can certainly uh, if there's a safety reason for limiting the number of parking spaces in the parking lot, you can limit it that way. Typically, the the, the capacity of the building is set by the by the fire code. Um, so if you if, if you're worried about 95 cars being in the parking lot, that's something that can be taken taken care of by if there's a, a safety reason by designating where the parking is going to be. So. Um, the usually the like I said the occupancy is is, is handled okay. by either the building code or the fire code, so um, I I think you can go about it rather than limiting the occupancy, rather than limiting where the parking is for a legitimate safety reason. Okay, thank you. Can I ask you a question, follow up? Sure. Who determines how many parking places are safely laid out in a particular? Well, that's line? typically the zoning issue. Okay. Uh, however, if there is a if if, if there is, you know. We come to this, luckily, this isn't a brand new business and we have no idea how it's going to work out. 
this is a business that's been going for a while, and I understand from reading the file that there are some issues with sight lines, and I'm, I don't know if our police chief he, is here to, to, to talk about problems with sight lines, but I thought that, that in something that I read, we, the, and even the applicants had agreed to eliminate a number of parking spaces to right. allow for We're going to get to parking to later on in the, yeah. 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 Okay. All right, so I, I guess. Parking, parking actually is covered by your zoning bylaws. Yeah. You need a certain number of parking spaces for each each occupant who's there. You can't treat this establishment different from any other establishment in town. And you do have a condition, you can't park on the street. So if somebody was there and the parking lot's filled, then they're going to have to leave. They can't get in. There's no place for them to park. No, my question was more in the line of, as I look at it, it seems like those parking places are really packed in. And I don't know how that gets evaluated. Like the space in between, like the two rear ends of two cars, it just seems really tight. But I'm not a professional parking lot engineer, so I just was asking in the spirit of who checks on that? Because I know the standards change with time. That's all. That's what I was. That's what I was really asking about. Well, uh, fine. I mean, we're we're going to comply with your zoning with the zoning bylaws, and we do comply, and there's more than adequate space to comply. So, for for seating capacity, then, if I hear council correctly, I, I think if it's been ninety five, it's the the, the 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 code is the code. Um, I would, and I don't know whether we need to vote on each condition. How, how does that work, Brian? It depends how you want to do it, um, because we haven't really decided. I know. Uh, I, um, in terms of how you want to go with this, um, but I wouldn't take a vote at this time. Okay. I, I, in, Mr. Chairman, I think we're. In my understanding, is the public hearing is is still open. Yeah. So before you vote, I, I think what you would end up doing is closing the public participation portion of the hearing, make your deliberations, then 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 you do your vote, and you can vote each one if you'd like after that. Okay. Okay. Um, the manager and all servers employed by the licensed establishment shall attend and successfully complete an alcohol awareness training program, e.g. tips, immediately upon higher expression of certification. We understand that's part of state law, um, but we would, I, I'm thinking that it would be a good idea, and council's thinking is a very good idea to also have that in the, in the town code. That's totally acceptable. Yeah. Um, copies of all alcohol awareness training cert certifications shall be maintained by the licensee and be reviewable upon request of the town. Absolutely. Um, well, uh, suggestions that we've received. Um, no alcoholic beverages shall be served within the licensed premises during the 30 minutes preceding the hours stated on the license at which service of alcoholic beverages must cease. Last call. At last call, no licensed establishment shall serve more than one alcoholic beverage to a patron. So I think what this is getting at is there needs to be a defined time when last call exists as opposed to one minute of closing time. Um, I'm, I'm thinking back when I bartended in graduate school, I think last call went out a, a solid half hour, maybe 25 minutes prior to closing time so that people weren't ordering and <coughs> sitting around for a half an hour afterwards. So I think that's something that that, that would be a, a good recommendation uh, to set that time. All tables and bars must be cleared of all glasses, bottles, and containers of alcoholic beverages within one half hour after the hour stated in the license at which service of alcoholic beverages must cease. A third, all customers must be off license premises, including the parking lot, within one half hour after the hour stated on the license at which service of alcohol, alcoholic beverages must <coughs> cease. No employer or business owner in any type employee. of man. Employee. No employee. You said employer. D, D, read D. I was, I was in the middle of reading the Yeah, right. but there was a, a, a typo. You said employee. You're on C? And it means employee. Oh, I haven't read it. Okay, read, anyway. Read the no employee or business owner in any type of management capacity shall consume alcohol on the premises prior to <coughs> going on duty or during the respective on duty hours. That seems pretty standard. No alcohol can be served or consumed by anyone on the premise, premises before official opening hours or after official clo closing hours. 
No patrons shall be permitted to bring alcoholic beverages onto the licensed premises for the purpose of being consumed there. Consumption of alcohol, and, and I just want to point out that that, that if that is a condition, um, it, it needs to be very strenuously monitored. I'm not, I just happened to drive by today, because uh, it's on the way from my house to the elementary school, and there was someone with a can of beer, and I don't know whether they purchased it there or not, in the parking lot. And it was just like, it was serendipitous to this conversation. Um, and, and that really has to be obviously regulated. And you guys have run restaurants before, so you, you know how important that is. Um, consumption of alcoholic beverages are not permitted outside the building, including any designated area for smoking. And that's either whether, you, whether they brought it or whether they purchased it, it there. Um, and I believe it's illegal to bring alcohol <clears throat> onto the premises of an, uh, an entity that sells alcohol, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, a licensed establishment. Yes, right. It is. It is. The manager and all services and servers employed. Those are duplicative. What's that? Those two are duplicative of earlier ones. Okay. All right. I believe right that one has to do with tips, and the other one has to do with. Probably uh, alcohol. Yeah. Right. yeah, those are duplicative. Yeah. Okay. So those are the conditions we think would be, if this were to be approved, would be um, germane strictly to the alcohol license. Um, before we vote on the alcohol license, I want to go over the entertainment pieces because obviously they are combined. If that's allowed by hearing rules, I, I mean, I, I think you could certainly do that if you would like. Uh, they they aren't combined; they're two separate licenses. Right. Um, but for the purposes of this hearing, certainly, I don't think. And you can ask the applicant: Do you have any objections as to? Just going over and doing them both, and then um, ultimately voting on them separately. Mr. Lester? No. Okay. Um, these are current. Okay. These are current general operations that currently exist. All entertainment and sorry. General conditions. That general exist conditions. Existing. All entertainment and performance activities shall be restricted to the stage area of the premises as presently existing. One of the things that we will have to discuss if this is approved is the hours of operation shall be Monday through Saturday from X to from X time to Y time. And we have noted, and I believe I'm correct, that hours of operation have been requested to go till two o'clock, extending beyond the current one o'clock. Correct. And that's both, for, that's both for alcohol and adult entertainment. Correct. Okay. This license is not transferable. The license shall comply with the provisions of Chapter 62 of the Waitley Code Adult Establishments. No nude dancers or other nude entertainment performers of the opposite sex may perform together at the same time. No more than X persons shall perform at the same time, and that's something that the board is going to have to, to, to discuss. Um, there shall be no presentation of pictures, films, videos, and if you guys have questions or comments, please chime in. There shall be no presentation of pictures, films, videos, or other visual depictions or simulations of any acts which are otherwise prohibited on the premises. The licensee shall maintain on the premises a current list of all employees which shall be provided upon request of any town of Whateley police officer or the select board, board of health, building inspector, or any other authorized agents. The licensee shall not permit any disorder, prostitution, lewdness, or any illegal activity on the premises. The licensee shall establish, maintain, and enforce written policies regarding the following. Regarding the following no illegal drug use or activity related to illegal drugs on the premises. Prevention of sexual harassment of employees. Prevention of prostitution activities between performers and customers. The licensee shall notify the select board within five days of receiving notice of any judicial or administrative proceedings which may affect the status of the license. The license shall coordinate with the Waitley Police Department, the licensee, I'm sorry, shall coordinate with the Waitley Police Department in the development of a formal security plan for the premises and shall submit the completed plan to the Chief of Police for approval. 
The plan shall include at least the following elements. A floor plan and layout of the premises, provisions for a security check of all patrons entering the premises, limiting customer entry so as to maintain compliance with the certificate of occupancy for the premises under the state, build, state building code, Procedures for protecting employees, patrons, and neighboring residents from rowdy or disruptive conduct. For purposes of promoting security and safety at the premises, the licensee shall complete the following improvements no later than, and we need to set a date. Install a new video surveillance system for the premises, providing the capability to view and record at least the following all air and record at least the following all areas of the parking lot as well as the entrance exit points for the parking lot on Christian Lane and State Road. The outside smoke and break area, all building entrances and all inside areas of accessible that are accessible by the public. Install new and or modified exterior lighting fixtures to increase general visibility and to increase the existing lighting of the outside smoking break area in order to deter criminal activity. Um, and this would probably be germane to both the liquor and adult, I think. Construct an eight foot, and this was something that was discussed in the meeting um, with the Butters. Construct an eight foot high wall made of a masonry, masonry product such as cinder block and including a fire exit door which shall be monitored by employees around the perimeter of the current footprint of the outdoor smoking break area to replace the existing chain link fence so as to dampen the noise coming from the smoking break area and to discourage the conversations between persons in the parking lot and persons in the smoking break area. Um, and again, I'll, I'll, the, the, these are <clears throat> items that were discussed at the abutters meeting. Install fencing between the licensed premises and the properties on the east side of the premises to block sound and light from disturbing the neighbors. Construct an eight foot high stockade fence along the eastern side of the parking lot from a point 10 feet off the edge of the pavement of Christian Lane to the masonry wall around the smoking break area so as to prevent persons from entering the wetland area between the premises and property of abutters. Redirect the utility pole mounted spotlight away from Christian Lane and more move towards the building and parking lot. We believe that may be something that we have to deal with. Can you say Comcast? Maybe, maybe the owner of that? It's probably ever source. Oh, ever source. Okay. In, yeah. Okay. Um, terminate all parking within the parking spaces along the western side of the parking lot abutting State Road, so as to remove the line of sight obstruction for vehicles passing through the Christian Lane and State Road intersections, and improve the safety of the intersection for motorists. And I believe that's just those cars, or maybe more that park parallel to the Jersey barriers, or is it more than that? We were told at the meeting there was only one space, actually. There's one today that parks up closer to the building, but there could be one or two others that are perpendicular to State Road. It could be in the line of sight. We were, when we went over the meeting, we were told there was one by the telephone pole yeah. that was the problem, and that was the only one. I don't know what the maybe Maybe the chief can help us on that. Um, I, she'll get to you in a second. I, I, I know as someone who drives from the elementary school <coughs> on a daily, almost daily basis to, to my house, the row of cars there, and I would argue the Jersey barriers are, are an impediment to, to, the, to the sight line as well. Um, but it, it, the cars there do make it a little, little bit of a challenge looking north right. when, you're, when you're coming from right. the east on Christian Lane. Jim, do you have anything there? As far as the parking spaces go, I think it's more of a seasonal thing, because in the winter, you're going to have more of an issue with cars parking there and then trying to find places to put the snow. That's that's where we get more complaints and see more of the issue. Um, I'm not sure that restricting that entire section of all the parking that's there is, is really going to improve. Um, I go through there a million times a day as well, <clears throat> and it's usually the spots that are closest to Christian Lane that you have to pull a little bit further forward. <coughs> I mean, you, you can't sit back by the wall. And that brings out. you to the traffic going north, potentially. It, it doesn't bring you into the traffic, it brings you even with the yeah. traffic. Yeah, but you know, maybe there's something that, the, something that the, the town could put up as far as a you know, better stop line there, so people know where, where to stop and have that kind of coincide with the, the area where those cars are parked, right by, the, right by that wall. 
but my my concern is is with the car the car parking spots right by the right by the wall there yeah, and if, yeah. even if you move those cars back into the parking lot you know if you readjusted things and move those in six or seven feet i think that would improve the line of sight yeah i think the 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 issue and i agree with what you're saying jim but what i've noticed the issue is enforcing the parking in that parking lot where that vehicle parks it's obstructing the view uh there's an island there that's been paved over it's not to my knowledge it's not signed as as a parking spot but somebody does park there and to <clears throat> prohibit somebody from parking there i mean you could tell them all day don't park there but you need to put something physical there either a, a, an island or, or a barrier or, or something so they don't park there that's that's the issue getting somebody not to park there because today you can you can park anywhere in a lot basically because there's nothing prohibiting you from doing that are you talking about all the way to the north side yes the, the north side the north side of the building you you look at the pavement and there is an island that was there at one yeah, time yeah. and that's been People paved park along right along the building there. right well yeah. along state road and that's been paved flush so that vehicle can very easily park right there by the side of the road you need to look at i i think enforcing that parking spot are we talking in the parking lot now? in the parking lot itself yes so, so i'd suggest as we talked about a about the parking the parking um, space by the um, telephone pole and now we're talking about the space closer to Christian Lane. Well, I don't know where's the telephone pole. You have a condition pole. that those two be blocked off. I don't know where's the telephone pole where this car on the northern part yeah. of the parking lot. Yeah. I mean, we're talking the same area. Yeah, so the, you yeah. Would, you would block off those two spaces. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just so I'm clear, Just you're, the spaces. You're, the, are you talking about that the curvature area at, no. at the intersection? No, we're talking about up here. here. That's the issue up there. It's not so much. See, there. I think down there is also an issue personally. But but these two well, slanty ones. Yeah, at that right at the intersection. <laughs> there, but. I don't personally see many vehicles parked around the curve. I see more parked yeah. up closer to the building. Although on this particular day, the satellite shows people parked in both yeah, of those places. Well. Right. And when there are plenty of parking spaces available. Sheila, you were going to ask a question so or make a comment? Gonna say in terms of the parking we do have bylaws that very specifically address line of sight and size of the individual spaces which the ones that are there are not compliant with right now so you know when we talked about it in the meeting the other day what what these guys did say was that they would comply with what our bylaws state so we do have bylaws that address the line of sight and that also address the individual size of a, a vehicle space, and if these guys are willing to comply, then that's what we're asking them right. to do. Right, I mean, they kind of have to comply, right? it, it's, yeah. especially if the capacity is going to be the right. capacity they're and, talking about. Yeah, and what triggers someone going to check the parking lot, though? That's the part I don't understand. What uh, triggers somebody actually going to check that the line of sight and the uh, and the, the size of the spaces mm -hmm. and, and such? Building. And you have jurisdiction on that? part of a condition of the license, it would be up to the licensee to enforce that. You're not giving us the power to go out and issue parking tickets or tow cars. So we could give you that authority as the police as the police authority. I, <clears throat> Mr. Mr. Chairman, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure that you could give him the authority to issue parking tickets on private property. It would be on state property. It, Where it, these people are parking, I, I, I'm guessing it's state property. I don't know for sure. I, it's it's close. I, I don't think that the, I, I'm not sure that the chief he could probably speak to this better than I but do you have the authority to issue tar uh, tickets on state highways not not with the current status of the way that the town's uh, bylaws are written now so I, I'm not sure that you I, I think what would be better done is you make it a condition of the permit and if they violate the permit then they, they can be brought in for a Okay. A suspension, revocation, some type of hearing to, to, to get them to, to fly right, to comply with the permit. But as, as far as the, uh, the size of the parking spots, my recollection is our, our town bylaws specify a minimum width for handicapped parking. <clears throat> Beyond that, I don't think there is for general parking. And to my knowledge, there is no state standard for parking lots there's guidelines out there that say you can go anywhere from eight foot to whatever you want we ran into this for the town hall with with the architect what's the minimum space 
Some people on a committee wanted eight foot. Well, eight foot, you're, you're banging everybody's doors. So, and we asked, what is the standard? There is no standard, there's a guideline that, that people are supposed to follow, architects follow, and that's, that's, uh, that's, my, that's, that's my knowledge of, of the parking. I mean, I've been involved in parking for quite a few years, and, and, and that's, the concern, that's the criteria that we deal with for parking lots. There's also a guideline for the spacing in between two rows. I think it's 60 feet or something. And we, that's why at the town hall, you have that so much more open space. You have the narrow island in the front, so you could get the 60 feet. That was a, a standard, uh, that was a guideline that the architect wanted us to follow, and we could do it there, so we did it. So I, so I think what I've heard from the applicants, and, and I think what would be helpful is that if we have parking spots in mind that, 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 that shouldn't be parked, then I think we should try to identify those now and be as clear as possible as to what we expect. It will, it will help us write the condition. Well, Joyce has the... I have the Google map. And we have the, the um, photo here as well. The, that Mr. Lester provided with us on the record. And, um, it, and I don't know, Jim, if you could identify which ones you are... If I can just make one other point, it, it may be worth noting that the parking lot was originally designed where it was much lower than it is now. They had to put a septic system in that raised the, the parking lot up. So that, that's where it addresses the, the line of sight. It used to be lower than it is now. So now it, it's higher. That's when those stone walls came in as kind of a support support walls. <clears throat> so the, the road versus the parking lot, they used to be even, but now they're not. So from an engineering perspective, I'm not an engineer, but I know that it's, it's changed over the years, the level of that parking lot. When that level of the parking lot changed, that's when the line of sight became an issue, is when that level changed. If the line of sight is four and a half feet on Christian Lane, that's what the guidelines I'm not talking about guidelines, I'm just talking about the difference between when it's level and when it's now higher than it was. Have you been in trouble with that? No. Well, the, the, I don't know if there's trouble or not, but, but it, is a, it is a concern with, with people using Christian Lane as, as a safety, the potential hazard there. Yeah. So we should try to eliminate that if we can. Right, look at the left. Look at the left side where the swamp's growing up yeah. on your way out of here, right. going through my intersection. Okay, my truck's pretty high. Yeah. And I'm telling you, it's very difficult to look over all the all the sawgrass that's growing in there now. What are you gonna do? Drain the swamp? Well, our, I think our, our highway department is, is trying their best to cut that down. That's property, that's state property. Well, and you're dealing with a wetland as well mm -hmm. in there too, so. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, so. but, but you know, you, you can deal with stuff you have control over, right. and you can't deal with stuff you can't don't have any control That's over. That's correct. That's just the way it goes. So, to you, to to, to follow Brian's advice, I sort of see five, possibly six, that would improve the site. I'm just like, for, um, it looks like I'm I'm thinking of it. I'm gonna. It's not gonna be a great name for it, but it's kind of the the slanty diagonal ones that are near that round corner. It looks like there's one, two, three, four of them in a row. Um, and three of the four would block the sight line of somebody who's at the stop line in Christian Lane. Three out of the four um, appear from the Google map to do that. And then there were two um, kind of at the closer to State Road. Um, and I can point at it on this map. I bet that's the same map that you're looking at over it here. Um, those seem to be the ones that are troublesome. Uh, so, with, with all due respect, you come to an intersection, there are often cars parked on the road, and you pull up to where the stop sign is, and you pull ahead of them. You, you drive in Northampton, there are cars often parked right next to you, all the way to the stop sign, basically to the highway. There, when we had a meeting, and a police officer was there, it wasn't the chief, it was someone else, we identified one trouble spot, and we're willing to, which was by the part, which was by the telephone pole, and we're willing to eliminate a second space. That gives <coughs> somebody basically ten feet between, more than ten feet between the road between five and ten, 
and where they can see up five and ten. That takes care of the problem. You can't go just eliminate six parking spaces. Well, I, for no reason that I see, and and, and the chief hasn't said that. And no if reason. You go, so if you go general. out there and you look, and you do a site visit, you're going to see that when those two, when those, when no one is in those two parking spaces, you can see absolutely fine. Wow. Right. And, and, and you, you said when no one is in the parking spaces. Those two parking spaces. Two spots. But when those no one, spots. you're saying when no one is there, you can see just fine. But if someone is there, then you well, can't then see. Well, I agree fine. that we would part, we would erect a barrier so no one can use those two parking spaces. What would be the problem with eliminating the parking spaces along right at that intersection, though? Just, I think it's two more. <coughs> It, 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 it creates capacity problems. There's no need for it. Well, I, that's subjective. Well, it's subjective, but it's it's not required. If you go to state law and you go to high, state highway uh, guidelines, they're not going to say there's a need for it. If you look in every town, in every town, you have <coughs> you have in every city in Northampton, but we're in not Greenfield, in wherever we're you in are, you pull up to a stop sign and you look to your right and you pull beyond the car. So this is not unique, it's been like this forever. People have identified two spots that are the problem spots and we're willing to eliminate them, which means that when you get close to the road, you can see forever to your right, which is to your right. You don't need, you don't need to have 20 feet of sitting there the third no, part is saying 20 the, feet. Well, two, two spaces are 20 feet essentially, 15 feet, because there's all, already a, a good five feet. Well, um, okay. With, with, with all due respect, I mean, I, I, I am at that intersection every day, and when the cars are right there, it is a challenge to look beyond those cars. You have to, start, you have to creep closer and closer to the traffic coming from the south. Uh, that, it, it's subjective. It's... Jim. You know, I mean, we're talking about less than 10%. We're 60 parking spaces there, okay? And we're arguing over losing a few when they're telling me that they're not looking for more clientele, they're looking for better clientele, right? So what is six parking spaces going to do to you, okay? It's not gonna do anything. We had another accident at that intersection yesterday. Not sure if they're aware of that. A head-on crash with a car coming on Christian Lane. Now, yeah, it wasn't due to sight lines, but again, it's a bad intersection. So losing six spots, and you're telling me that you're not looking for more people, you're just looking for better clientele? You got 60 spots when, you're, when, when your capacity is 95. And you know, if you had three to one, you, you, would, you would need 40 spots. We're just talking about somebody's asking you to give up five to six spots. I think that's reasonable. That's a request. You know, you're digging your feet in on something that I don't think is really something to be arguing about. Yeah, as Mr. Edwards just got done saying, you have 60, but it's not really 60. I didn't see him ask the first question, raise his hand. So if we want to have a discussion, we'll have a discussion. You're right. No argument. You had just said it's 60, but it's not really 60. It's actually less than that, right? Uh, those words. I, I think I think it's tight, so, but it's so a, every, space it matter, the every space matters. Where it's not, it can't be where when it's convenient we actually don't have sixty, but when you are taking space away we do have sixty. It can't work like that. Okay, that's let's say it's, let's say if if there are sixty painted lines, there are sixty painted lines. Yeah. Okay. But then you can't unless we track everything else where we don't really but, have sixty. But to Joe's point, if you use sixty. And you take away six, it's just 10%. The entire premise has been that we don't actually have 60. That's what you said. We laid that foundation already. In the back. Um, it seems like there's a lot of questions about parking on the spaces. Name and address. Um, Nicole Lankowski, North Street, um, Waitley. Uh, there's so many questions about parking and a lot of unknowns and at the last meeting it was discussed to do a professional parking study. Um, what happened to that idea? Is that not on the table? There's so many unknowns. I think that goes back to my comment of the state has guidelines for intersections and there's an intersection site distance triangle that tells you the, where you should not have parking allowed. And that's based on primarily speed limit. Speed limit on state road is what, 45 through there, Jim? Yes. 45 miles per hour. So you need about 200 feet back 
without any obstructions for people to see on Christian Lane. And I don't know if anybody has done that analysis with that sight triangle to see how many cars fall into that. My, my I guess, opinion now is that it, it's, it's at least two cars there that are on the northern part of that lot and, and others here are saying there's more than that. Until you do that sight triangle analysis that the state has for intersection design, you're not going to know it, unless you go out there and physically look at it, park there and look at it and say, okay, this vehicle is, is blocking sight view or this vehicle in this space is doing that. Now, I don't know if anybody has done that. We're looking at a map here where we see vehicles and some of us have personally experienced vehicles parking there blocking our sight. And then we're the two that I'm saying personally block my sight and I think Jonathan is saying the same thing. And we're willing to eliminate those too. Okay, but to go beyond that, like that person, like you're saying back there, you need to do that in sight triangle analysis. But, but if, I don't you know, know if, that's... if those two are eliminated and you're, and you're at the stop sign, yeah. and there is a stop sign, yeah. okay, then you can see <clears throat> to the right. See, and I, I just don't believe you can. I, I just, I, again, I, I'm not, I'm not using a picture. I'm using my, I, I drive this all the time. And I'll admit it, I drive it with my kids. And that's important. Well, those two spaces are they aren't there. And and I don't believe that those are the only two spaces. You think there's a third space on five and ten? I think that the 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 area where there's an intersection between Christian Lane and five ten, where those Jersey barriers start to or whatever they are, start to curve, I think when cars are parked right there, it impairs your sight line looking north on five ten. Yeah, when you're the second or third car, but not when you're the first car. No, when, when, when you're the first car. This is not true. Jim, what do you think? You're, you're our chief. If, if you took that one spot out of there, I'd have to agree with him that if you take one spot out, you can see if you've got a sight line. When you say, when, which, can you the, show me on the, the map which spot you're talking about? It's right on, right on the corner, the no, very please, southwest corner. Please come up and point at my screen, because I don't know what you're talking about. There's one spot where there's sometimes two vehicles parked there. I don't know whether you call that two spots or one spot. So right, right in here. Yeah, this these right are the ones one. I'm that's talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So right if you're there. here, that one's clearly in the line of sight. This one possibly as well. Right? It says if you're here, looking up here. Because that, that ground is higher, so it doesn't even have to be a very big car to block the line of sight. So, and this one, for me, it's harder to tell from looking at the map. It might be that it, that one's not. But it, yeah, I don't. I'm not concerned about from there east. It's, from it's this the one, one right at the road. And then there's that, that empty, the one that does not have a car in it at the moment. Right? So my, my concern is these, is these up here. I always see one park here, and that's in line of sight. So, and then them two. So we're talking about different okay. spots right now. I'm looking at this corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The car right in the corner. Yeah. That's the one that's been discussed and already. Like if there were a car here, in which they've agreed to move, that. is that also? <coughs> and there's no car in there in this particular picture. But if that's still a parking place, presumably there could be a car in that parking place. And that seems just as likely to block the line of sight as this one. Uh, this one being closer helps you get around it, but that. That land is so much it, higher. It, it depends on what you're considering right. line of sight. I mean, right. if you're trying to look straight up this way, you can't I'm see that far anyways. No, I was thinking if you're, if you're like right up there hugging yeah. that, yeah. that and you're looking line, straight up this way, up five and ten. That's, that's the one that's going to attack. Okay. Right. And I think if there were one here, it would also attack. There's not one in the picture, but that's, but that's a place where a car could be. And then the ones that nobody's arguing about are these ones. Yeah. Those ones definitely yeah. get you there. Again, just for the record, my my concern is just that for the for this most yeah. parking spot, if, you, if and they wanted to agree to yeah. the second one, that's that's but fine. Okay. So so yeah. So my question for you is, how do you know not? How, why are you not concerned about that one? Because I don't think it. Because I I go through there. 15, 20 times a day, and I don't have a concern with that. I mean, I see cars parked there all the time. You can, uh, you can see, I'm not, I'm not looking up this way. Right. I'm looking no, up to the road, so it doesn't. But the, the way your arrow is facing, that's not, that's, oh, that's not the line of sight. That's the line of sight is. I'm just, I'm just using that as a reference. But if I just put something here. Yes. Yeah. So this is this is your. Something's parked there. 
It's not a concern. Okay. All right. I think we've got all that on this one. I think we have a sufficient input, and it'll just be part of the the decision that the board makes on this issue. Um, and clearly, this would be put in both oh, both licenses. Um, licensee shall restrict access to the outside smoking break area so that patrons are not allowed to visit or interact with the entertainers via access from the parking lot. Licensee shall employ or retain trained security personnel who have crowd manager certification per the state fire code, 527 CMR, one, chap, uh, chapter one, paragraph one, I'm not sure which, and who shall be on the site during all hours entertainment is offered and one hour before and one hour after in order to maintain order and safety and deter criminal activities such as illegal drug or prostitution activities and disorderly conduct by patrons. The security personnel shall regularly walk the property to discourage loitering and discourage persons from congregating in the parking lot. Uh, and I would add to that and to ensure that there's no, there's no consumption of alcohol in the parking lot. In the event of any disturbance, fight, or other altercation between any persons at the premises, the licensee shall immediately contact the Whitley Police Department. No neon signs or internal, internally illuminated signs shall be permitted on the premises, and the licensee shall comply with all applicable town bylaws and regulations re relating to signage. And I will note that the signs, I've been told that the signs that are there now were by special permit. Um, so even the signs that were that are there now would would fall outside. <coughs> Am I correct in that? What's up? The signs that are there now would would fall outside of our tradition. They they were special permit signs. I believe they have special permits for those signs. Okay, so that would have to go to the, the ZBA, correct? Uh, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Same signs. Okay. Same signs staying there. Same same, same, same signs. Okay. Side. Okay, I'm just. In case you guys wanted to, you know, nope. marketing being what it is. Same side. Um, those are the the pieces. Now, Brian, I saw I didn't see in here where um, the the licensee shall provide, and maybe I just read it and I and I didn't read it thoroughly enough. Shall <clears throat> provide the written plan to. Ensure was that in there, or just the they they need a policy, but but. Can I approach the board? No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. your plan if any of these infractions took place by from let's just say employee to employee as an example first that employee would be terminated the plan addresses that if you read the whole plan. I'm sorry okay I was just I I'm not sure everyone wants to read watch me read three pages on my own but we're gonna create a culture of responsibility not every incident leads to automatic termination. The plan talks about the fact that these things are prohibited on the premises. Like any sexual harassment policy, termination is certainly possible. Immediate termination is certainly possible. But you cannot spell out in a sexual harassment plan every possibility of what could occur. You don't say, if you touch somebody intentionally, this happens, depending on whether it's above the waist, below the waist, on the foot, in the arm. All you do is you set up a procedure where sexual harassment is not allowed. Every employee has the ability to immediately contact somebody if any harassment is occurring. And it's, sexual harassment is prohibited by state law. <coughs> And, it call, and, it'll, and each one of the employees will sign that harassment policy, saying they received a copy of it, and it gives them their rights under that, if for some reason management doesn't act appropriately. Thank you. We can't do any more. 
Okay, thank you for this. Sure, thank thank you. You. And it addresses the prohibition, the criminal prohibition that you talked about, John, in the first paragraph. Okay. There'll be no criminal acts on the premises, there'll be no criminal act, there'll be no actions which could lead to criminal actions off, off the premises either. There'll be no discussions. <laughs> okay. You are happy to have that attached to the conditions. Thank you. Those are the conditions that are spelled out. Um, obviously, there are some specifics that the board would have to agree upon. And am I right to say that it has to be agreed upon as soon as this hearing is closed? Mm -hmm. We should deliberate. Yeah, uh, we should deliberate in the open meeting. In the, right. That's, yeah. Yeah. If you feel like you you have all the information that you'd like, and people have had their say, then it would be appropriate to close a public hearing and, and deliberate on those conditions, or however you want to proceed. Can, can I ask, is there a document that explains the, uh, the meeting with the abutters? What happened during that meeting? Yes. Or the, do we have that in here? Yeah. That's a little more information. Joe, um, while we're looking for that. Yeah. Um, so what was brought up at our last meeting? was uh, police presence in the building. Um, uh, select board member uh, Fortune brought that up and that seemed to be a bit of a surprise for everybody. Um, I don't know where that is in any of these conditions. Um, technically it's in the one that says you're going to go to section 62. Because that's where it's spelled out that you need to have uh, a policeman on duty during certain entertainment. So that will be part of this? So yeah, so that is a part of the conditions. Yeah. Um, but, but, is it okay to, yeah. there, um, there is a, a, a request that we haven't gotten to yet um, from council of the, of the, of, of uh, Castaways LLC. Uh, or I'm sorry, I butchered that. Wait, the investments. Wait, investments I, I apologize. Um, to have a variance on that, on that one item of the wiki code. So who? Um, so the, so the the select board is the one that votes on that. So that's not a total change of a bylaw. It's a variance. Should should we choose? They, they, right. they requested it. That's no, right. no, I just want to be sure that. Who's, are we changing a bylaw, or is this just a variance to right. the bylaw? It's a request for a variance. I mean, just having that for that part of the area. Um, the notes that Fred asked for are part of, in terms of what was agreed upon, what was discussed, are part of the conditions that were discussed in um, in, in both the alcohol and adult entertainment license. What, and the reason just for clarity that I think that some of them should be listed in both licenses is that hypothetically, if your liquor license were to be suspended for three days, that by definition would suspend the, by, by my understanding, it would suspend the conditions within that license, and so, for instance, the the, the 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 access from the smoking area, those kinds of things should be in both of them in the event that one of the licenses is suspended. So it's always referenced um, in, in in both licenses, um, and that's why I have I, I'm, I'm <coughs> suggesting overlap in some of those. Other comments? You guys want to say anything before we close the hearing? I have one question. Asking, I guess, the, the group that met here with with the proposer here, uh, you're constructing a eight foot concrete wall, a stockade fence, and maybe other things. I just see the words construct. Did you talk about maintenance? I think it should be construct and maintain that. Otherwise, who knows what's going to happen down the road? To the fence. Was that brought up during your discussions? 
No, they mentioned about painting it. That was it on the offset. Yeah, but there was no maintenance. Yeah, well, that's not a problem. We could, we, you could put in the works and start. Okay, well, I just want to know if that was, we maintain everything. That was right. uh, brought up during your discussion. Well, and, and uh, okay, well, that's, that's my recommendation once we go through here. My, my other question about the eight foot wall essentially separating the properties was, and I don't know how you deal with this, but those are wetlands and my my concern is that CONCOM is gonna have something to say about putting a fence in that area. I don't know that, but it's something that we have to think about. Um, I don't know whether you have any thoughts on that or whether, whether council does, whether uh, is there, if we say we want a fence and CONCOM says, no, we don't need a fence, we don't want a fence because of environmental concerns, I don't think we can override that as a board. Uh, I think you're right. Um, I, I agree with you. And then it would become an impossibility for them to comply with that particular um, requirement. So at that point, because the fence, I believe, is for sound purposes, it may have to come back in to modify the permit to come up with a different solution. Is, isn't the fence also to prevent People, people deciding to here. run into the neighbor's yard at two o'clock in the morning. Well, I, mean, I, I thought that was yeah. coming. Well, yeah, I think it's noise was the main. Okay, all right. I, main, yeah. I, that's my main thought was no one thought anyone was running through the swamp. Yeah, yeah. no one's coming Fair point. I think it was for, yeah. for sound and light said, from the cars. No, the, yeah, the perimeter yeah. fence. Okay. Yeah. In and the previous it, hearing, though, they did describe people have come through okay. there. One individual did come through. Right, well, the fence line, that yeah, fence line won't hurt. Yeah. Anyway, it's on. It's on a parking. It's on the edge of a parking lot, which right. is. So I mean, you have to go to. We have to go to Cotton Con and see. We yeah. apply for them. I'm just raising it. Something to. Pay. No, that's actually a valid point because I've been in those situations. So let's talk about that now. What happens if Hong Kong says, says no? It's an impossibility. It, we, but then I think you would be coming upon you to come. We would have to then come in and ask for a modification of the permit. And we would have to figure out another way to right. uh, attenuate the noise. You know, when you, when, when you know, I'm sorry, but what's your reason here? So 171-16, screening and buffer zones. A buffer zone and screening shall be required on any lot in any commercial or industrial district where it joins a lot in a residential. The buffer zone shall be at least 30 feet wide, shall contain a screen of plantings or a wall, fence or berm, complementary with plantings, this is from Waitley's just past March 28th, right? Uh, the screen shall be of sufficient density to provide 75% continuous opacity at a height of not less than six feet, but of sufficient height to interrupt the view between the two sites. The screen shall be maintained by the owner or occupant so as to maintain the required opaqueness year round. So that's right from our, we, we have these in our bylaws. I would assume that this may hinge on whether building we need a building permit they would need a building permit to construct that fence anything over seven feet i believe the code would require a building permit but but secondly and probably as importantly uh, you're reading from the zoning bylaw i know it yeah but it's yeah it's a pre-existing non-conforming use over there so to the extent uh you know that would complicate matters as to whether or not they would have to comply with that particular zoning bylaw because it's been in existence prior to the adoption of the zoning bylaw. But you're arguing that so, it's so the same. It's, and we're yeah. arguing that's not. But if we put it in as a condition, then it applies. Yes, and, we're, and, we, and we, we agree to that as far as the right. condition. As far as going in front of CONCOM, if you go in and you say, here is what we, you know, you're, obviously they're within 200 feet of the, of the wetlands. That's what someone's gonna say, you can't do anything. But you say, well, I can't build on the other side. We discussed that at our meeting. That can't happen. Here's the only place that it can happen. And so there's conditions that can be written into it and all these other things. And you know, it, it, things aren't impossible just because you're you're within 200 feet of a wetlands or in the, in the buffer zone of a wetlands. And, and I think if that, if that were to happen, I think we would need to just reconvene and figure out how we're gonna fix the, That's fix the problem. That's fine. Nikki? Um, I think this, Fence condition kind of highlights the, the fact that there are a lot of different conditions in this plan that haven't been researched and that you don't have answers for. The hours of operation, um, the policies, um, 
you know, the parking, we don't know even really how many spaces there are. So there's, I don't know if we are going to solve all these things tonight. It seems like there, there's more research that needs to be done. You're never going to solve the fence issue. Yeah, wait, yeah. And, until until we go to the ComCom for, for that request. I mean, that's six months down the line. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have a, we have a request. We're going to apply. Um, it, it's, it, may, it may turn out, like council says, if it's over seven feet, you need a building permit. If it's six feet eleven inches, you don't need a building permit. I think the condition would make more sense. Right, and so we might come back and say. We'll say it's impossible, but we'll do 611, you know? Um, but I'm not sure why ComCom would, would say that you can't do it when there's already an existing shame link fence around part of it, which you're <coughs> simply eliminating. I, I don't know. I mean, no, well, that's gonna be a material solution. I don't, I don't know. I'm just raising it as. I, 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 mean, I understand, but we can't. We can't you can't anticipate, right? You can't resolve it tonight. This is the third hearing. There, there are some things that we can resolve, and, and, and what we, what I think needs to happen is when we close this hearing, we, the board, goes through each of the items, and if there's a question, for instance, the seating capacity, mm -hmm. do we stick with 95? And we just decide as a board, and by council's suggestion or thoughts, we, we might consider voting on them one at a time. Um, or we could do, we could just make the decisions and, and then and then vote all, all in or not. Um, the hours of operation, we've had the input and I think we as a board need to decide what the hours of operation we're gonna impose are. Susan? Can we discuss hours of operation in the public hearing? Yes, absolutely. Okay, because they, they are requesting expanding hours both beyond what the license currently is and what current operation is and has been, from what I understand, for at least a decade. That if the you know, whole premise is, or whole thing is built on the premise that there will not be a significant increase in traffic, expanding the hours by one, you know, adding one day a week beyond what is currently operating. Will, you know, could potentially expand traffic by 20% over you know, the five days it's currently operating. Going from 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. is adding you know, more inconvenience for the people whose homes, people, you know, the people leaving the premises have to pass because now it's even later into the night that they can be disrupted. Did the above meeting have any effect on you guys? I mean, was, was that a waste of our time? You know, we talked about pretty much hours. We talked about moving a light, not moving a telephone pole. He wanted to turn the light, if you recall. Okay. If Joe wanted a concrete I don't, yeah, um, barn and some fencing so that uh, people wouldn't run across and it could maybe block noise or headlights, whatever, from the parking lot. That's what was, that was what was made up that night. Speaking for myself? I don't think it was a waste of time. I don't see anything in the abutters meeting notes um, about um, about operating hours. I don't, I, and, and maybe that's just a, a, an omission that was- I don't believe we have written. any concern, otherwise it would have came up. Oh, so it's just, it's not here. So it does And I'm 47 yeah. feet away from the place. Well, I, well, so, the, the, but I don't think it was a waste of time, I guess, is the answer to your question. Because I found this useful and it helped shape the kinds of conditions that we are considering. I, I, I think it was incredibly useful. I, I, and, and, I, and I believe I started it. I gave kudos to everybody for taking the time to do that. So it was incredibly helpful. <laughs> is it the only thing that we think about? No, there are other oh, things beyond the, the abutters meeting. But absolutely, it, it formed a lot of the conditions that I spent a little bit of time going over. So it was absolutely the use of time. But let me ask, and maybe Brian knows, was this draft of, of the abutters meeting shared with the abutters and the proposer? Yes. They all had, had this, so, okay. Um, 
But am I correct <laughs> that hours of operation was not discussed in the budget meeting, or was it? I don't recall. Just I don't recall any discussion of it. But okay. So we did talk about. We didn't talk about one and two. We did talk about it being open on Sunday in ways to ensure that there was no noise and no problem mm -hmm. from the park. And correct me if I'm not remembering correctly. The Sunday operations would just be for alcohol, but also or also adult entertainment. Just alcohol and, and food, whatever you guys decide to do. But there would be no adult entertainment there on Sundays. And Mondays, you're still not opening, although you're licensed to open if you. The children plan to be open Monday. Yeah. Like to be What's that? We plan like to be open, open Monday. You plan to be open. So you yeah. plan to be open seven days a week? Six days of new oh. entertainment. Yes, right. Right. Okay. And I think that went to, to Susan's concern about the increased traffic flow over those two days. There is a wait and see period too. I mean, there's some organizing on our end. It's not like we close and there's a hundred cars in the parking lot every day. We we're gonna work through some things there too. So, well, let me say one thing. Yeah. There's nothing in the adult entertainment law that talks about your your not. An increase in traffic being prohibited, okay? Okay? It has to do with the time of day when there's traffic going by and the hours of that time of day. That's what the adult <coughs> entertainment file of the statute talks about, the state statute. Okay. But the entertainment license does talk about an increase in traffic. Correct. But so if you're asking for an entertainment license, I know there's an intersection. But I, in my opinion, it is a legitimate concern of this board, an increase in traffic, which is an increase or a decrease in, in public safety. And I do think they can condition an entertainment license based on that concern. I agree with you okay. in general, okay? But the board also has the study which was done on five and 10 as to the vehicles and when those vehicles are on five and ten mm -hmm. and the times when there's heavy traffic are in the morning and four to six at night so you're saying from one to two there's not heavy traffic no so your point is that there is no there's no traffic or from nine to ten or from nine to eleven you know that's a whole different game there's there's a, a virtual i think it's a tenth of i look at it really quickly but i think it's a tenth of the traffic that it is uh, on those peak hours. So yeah, sure, there's, tra there's now traffic on a Sunday between uh, 9 and 11, okay? But it's, it, it doesn't, but the purpose of the increase in traffic, and I agree with you, is that it adversely affects the safety of a roadway. And it doesn't in this case because of the hour difference. I've litigated that one before. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if I understand correctly, the entertainment license is renewable annually. Mm -hmm. Then can the, since the applicants have said they don't intend to have entertainment on Sunday, just alcohol, can that not be put into the conditions and then if they change, come at the annual renewal to discuss that? That put in put in as a condition, no entertainment on Sunday. But if they at some point change their mind at the annual renewal, they can then bring that up for a change. And, and maybe I was wrong about the, the, the law, but I, I guess I was under the impression that adult entertainment there was a state law about adult entertainment on Sundays. Am I yeah, incorrect I, in that? Yeah, the current license doesn't allow it on Sundays. It's just the license uh, that's not, okay. And and I don't know that that's because state law says. But that, uh, but it, you guys would know better than me, assuming you've done the research. I just, I thought that that was it, but maybe under the sort of the old blue law concept. Well, I know that the, the, the applicant said they're not gonna have adult entertainment on Sunday. Um, whether they have a, a jukebox, which is entertainment, or some type of entertainment, uh, just they haven't applied for adult entertainment on Sundays. Right, and so they can't do adult entertainment without applying for it. So right. I, I think, Fred, that would be 
Okay, yeah. They can't, they they can't do it. They can't yeah. have not applied. So. The the it's not a business decision. It's the application. Yeah. Um, so okay. would not be allowed under this application. Okay. Jonathan, I, I would um, su suggest to, that you ask if, if all these, if there are any other conditions other than the hours of operation that the abutters wish to make that are not documented here. Yeah. Okay, uh, the abutters wish to make any other comments that aren't documented in this draft report other than the hours of operation. I just have, a, I do have a question. I thought that that came up about the hours of operation. I thought that the alcohol license was going to go to one and the entertainment was going to go to two. Am I, am I wrong? That's the way it's currently proposed. Okay, so I thought I heard earlier they were talking about alcohol and entertainment both until two o'clock. That may have been my misrepresentation. Okay. All right. So the you. last the last call would be one o'clock. Still be one o'clock. The Alpha Del Better Hammond would be two o'clock. So bottles off the table by one whatever. Yeah. Whatever we decide on. Yes. And that and people would be hanging out without a drink in front of them if they chose to right. until two o'clock. Hi, Paul Antea, Weber Road. Are you going to discuss the policing needs with these changes tonight? You and I have talked about this a little, a little bit in terms of what, and, and you can chime in. When does the variance request come into play? Before we vote on the license issue or my understanding is we do not have to address the variance tonight. It's a condition, right? No, the variance isn't a con is they're asking to get out of one of the conditions right, with the right. variance. So if we don't act on it tonight, they then still the require in place. to have a yeah. police officer there for right. time. Yeah. But it's really kind of silly not to discuss it. We discussed it with the chief. The chief does not want to put a detail in there. I uh, I had a talk with our police chief, and I don't think you've characterized his thoughts Let's, properly here. I, I think I think in, in because a lot of the people out there have no idea what we're talking about potentially. If we're going to discuss this, we should read the variance request. But I want to know whether the variance request can take place before we've approved or not approved the license. Or doesn't it matter? I, I don't think it really matters. I agree with my brother that it probably makes sense to take it up at the same time because you are saying in your in the conditions that you read that they have to comply with the adult entertainment section of the bylaw. One of those conditions of the bylaw is that they have to have a police detail. They're asking to vary that. Yeah. So you bring it up now, you bring it up together, okay. or you bring it up immediately after. Okay. It, it needs to be addressed and probably should be addressed at the same time. There's no deal with that, so you might as well address it. Paul? Yeah, um, you know, with the discussions around traffic, with these discussions around policing, all of this is going to add up to additional costs to the town. I think we should go one step further and think about closed circuit television at that intersection, and possibly one further up near the Sugarloaf shops, so we can monitor all activity in those areas at all times. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to read. Can you close the TV? I'm going to read the, the the way the bylaw currently states, and I'm going to paraphrase is that during hours of operation of adult entertainment there should be there needs there must be police presence on property all the time i do not believe it would be required on sundays when there's no adult entertainment i think it is just for those hours of operation where there's adult entertainment going on that's waitley code as it currently is written. The request we have gotten, which we've received from council for Waitley Investments is, um, I'm writing on behalf of Waitley Investments LLC with respect to their application of an adult entertainment license to request that the board grant a waiver to chapter 62, adult, and adult establishment section eight, which states that a police officer be on duty when entertainment is scheduled at a premises with a liquor license. The variance is requested under Chapter 62, Section 19. 
a variance from the specific rules and regulations may be granted any owner, performer, grantee of a license pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 138, Section 12, or other affected person at the discretion of the Waitley Board of Selectmen acting as the licensing board. <clears throat> the applicant must show that the public safety and order will be maintained and that the police protection of the town of Whitley will be preserved in the event that such a variance is granted. In support of the variance, I have talked with Whitley Chief of Police James A. Savini Jr., who has indicated that in his opinion, public order could be maintained by an employee of the club, provided that the employee was approved by the chief and that the employee's responsibility was security at the establishment. He further indicated that the Waitley Police Department does not have the personnel to provide a police officer on the premises at the times that entertainment will be provided. For these two reasons, the grant of a waiver would further the goal of ensuring that the police protection of the town of Waitley will be preserved in the event that such a variance is granted. More specifically, Waitley Investments LLC requests that a waiver be granted under Chapter 62, Section 19 from the provisions of Chapter 62, Section 8, provided that Waitley Investments LLC has an employee approved by the Waitley Chief of Police at all times when entertainment is offered, whose responsibility will be to provide security at the establishment. Since this is not a zoning bylaw, the waiver request is being presented in letter form. If the board would, if the board would like the waiver to be presented in a different form, please advise me accordingly. Yours, Thomas Lesser. <clears throat> I request this really for counsel. According to this bylaw, it says a police officer has to be present. Mm -hmm. There are two questions it does not really address. Mm -hmm. One is, does the police officer have to be a Waitley police officer or can be a detailed officer from another municipality? And two, who is supposed to bear the cost of I think this? this bylaw says who the cost is borne by. No, it doesn't. No, um, the, so I'm, I've got 62.8 up here. Um, 62.8 doesn't. It's, uh, the, it says additional officer shall be employed by the club is needed. It does not say. 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 It does not the expense of the license right. Right. So it's not and two issue. does it have to be a Waitley police officer or can it be a detailed officer from someplace be, else it, it has to be um, approved by the chief of police uh, approved by, right? approved approved by. by. Right. exactly but it needs to be a licensed officer yes right but, but so I think the answer would be it, it could be Anybody. It could be someone who's a police officer off to the yes. deer field or Sunderland or anything. Or yeah. Just wanted to make that clear. Okay. You should check with the chief. Yeah. Jim, what, what, what do you got? <clears throat> so as far as a couple of conversations that they had, one with their council uh, after the last meeting, uh, <coughs> looking at providing a police officer for just everyday operations while there's entertainment going on, which would be six days a week. And I'm guessing, I don't know the hours for sure, but probably two to two, one to two, somewhere around there. So we're looking at 12, 13 hours a day. Um, the, the issue that we had discussed was if there's professional security there hired by them, um, I would be okay with that because it would cause a hardship for us to try to fill a detail for every single day of the week or six days, six days out of the week for 12 hours. Um, yes, the request would come to us. I could contact Deerfield or Conway or whoever else, but that's gonna be an additional um, administrative burden on me, which I, don't feel that it's 100% necessary for just everyday operations. Um, I know this this bylaw went into effect 1982, I believe. I did speak with the previous administration as well, and we've never done this in the past. I've never I've been in the town since 2000. I've never done a detail, nor has anybody else in the Waitley Police Department done a detail at that establishment. Um, from what I understand, the only details that have ever been done at any adult establishment were down where Muffins General Market is now, back when that was a tobacco barn, which was another adult establishment. Um, it's the only place that a detail officer ever was, and that was 30 plus years ago, 36 years ago. Um, so I 
I can't look at it and say for sure that just based on their everyday operations that I absolutely would demand to have a police officer in there for 12 hours per day. On top of that, that would, that would cost about $650 a day for the, again, it's, it's not our concern who, who pays it, if, if that's what it's gonna be, but just so everybody knows that's about what it would cost, $650 wow. per day. It would be your responsibility to find the detail, or would it be their responsibility to find the detail? It's my responsibility. They would contact me, and then I would have to find them. Couldn't they find it and then no. you approve it? No. Why not? Because it has to come through me. I'm the one that employs, or that would seek out the oh, detail Oh, be under your employee, even though they... Yeah. I have the authority over whoever's going to be working in the town, so I could decide to go to Deerfield if it, if it isn't our guys, or uh, I can contact State Police, or I can contact somebody else, but it has to go... It would have to go through us, just like any other detail does. And if you couldn't find that person, they just couldn't have entertainment that day? Correct. Based so, on the way it did. Yeah, I, I just, Ed Ryan, attorney for the uh, current licensees. Uh, I just wanted to say, and for whatever reasons, and I don't know, but in the 42 years that the Constantopolis has operated this establishment, Castle Lounge, they've informed me that they've never had police detail assigned to the premises. Uh, and there haven't been any significant issues. I think I, I was present at the last hearing, and I think one of the members of the board inquired of the chief as to how many calls had been made uh, to the police uh, from the Castaway Lounge for, uh, for trouble. And I think I heard 16 over, uh, or were over 16 years, approximately one a year. Uh, so there's no history here in terms of, uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, problems that would require a police presence. I've represented over the years a number of uh, establishments that uh, uh, have entertainment and have sold liquor, and uh, the chief just mentioned 600 and some odd dollars a day. Uh, breaks the deal. I mean, it's, it'd be totally cost prohibitive for the uh, new licensee to have a police presence during uh, all times where entertainment was there. And finally, uh, I think your council may uh, agree with this, that in the event that the town of Wakeley experiences uh, issues or problems uh, at this establishment uh, uh, after the new owners uh, open and conduct their business there, uh, I think you can revisit the issue of a police presence uh, on the premises based upon the history of the activity there. So I don't think you give it up forever, uh, but I think that given the past uh, and the experience of the past uh, and going forward and the cost of this particular uh, application, I think uh, uh, I would favor and uh, uh, ask you to favorably uh, grant the variance that is being asked for by council for the applicant. Uh, just to just to finalize my thought, the second conversation that I have with with the chair member um, Joyce, we had a conversation of, about this, and my concern would have been if there is something other than the everyday operations, entertainment operations. If there's some large event that's going to take place, that's going to be there's going to be people, maybe 50, 60 cars there, but maybe they're going to pile in. Maybe there's going to be 95 people there. And there's going to be you know concerts or whatever it might be. Those are the things that I wasn't sure um, if there's going to be something other than just the everyday uh, entertainment operations that might be an area where I would have concern. Uh, if it was a Saturday night issue where there's some main event planned and there may be the potential for hundreds of people to show up. We're going to need somebody there to deter those people. We can only have 60 in the, in the I, parking lot. OK, I've got a couple questions on that. Um, first of all, to the point about the number of calls over a 16-year period of time since, since you've been around, and I think that was the time frame, it was 16 calls that resulted in arrest, wasn't it? No. no. It, was it was total calls? Criminal. Criminal. Total calls. Criminal. criminal. 58 criminal. calls. 16 of those were criminal related. That doesn't mean that there was somebody arrested. It was just, it just meant that maybe there was a, a fight in the parking lot. That's a crime. But maybe there was nobody arrested. Okay. And so it, it refers to that. And does it include or not include calls that may have been 
dispatched to the state police because we didn't have anyone on duty at the time. That's just our record manager. That's your record. So there could have been others. We don't know them. Yeah. Okay. Um, question you guys the, the, the point about the, the special event, if you will, I'm, I'm wondering if you have, let's assume, and I, and I think I'm, I'm thinking about the number of people to keep talking about historically, there are about 30 people who go in and out of the, of the establishment on a, on a nightly basis. And I could be wrong about that number, but I think I remember hearing about 30 as the, as the traffic flow. Of there were 16 cars in the parking lot on the way here. So there were 16. Okay, so let's say so maybe 25. Right. So, is your thought about a police presence based upon current population in the building, or would it change if all of a sudden these guys were the best business guys known to mankind, and they're pulling in? on a regular basis, you know, 80, 90 people, they're hitting capacity on a regular basis. Does your assessment change? How do you know that? I, I'm, How would you judge I, that? I, because, he, because he's a professionally trained person and I'm the way we get, get 700 people in that building. I'm just <laughs> asking his opinion. <laughs> I'm, I'm just asking his opinion. I understand you. So, so from, from my perspective, if, if the maximum capacity was there and it's just entertainment, I can't predict what's going to happen or what's not going to happen. I, I can reasonably predict that if there was some huge event that they, they were planning and maybe they were, maybe they were even expecting you know, hundreds of people that might show up there, they're not going to want those people there. So maybe we're there to, to just keep people out of the parking lot. I don't see that happening. I, I just... I, in my experience in the past, the way that the way the traffic is now at Cathways isn't the way it's always been. When I first started, the traffic was much higher than it is. It, it's much, much much busier than it is now. The things have kind of diminished over the years. So, going back to 2000, it was much busier there. <clears throat> and still, if it was that time, I still wouldn't have this, the concerns that I need to have somebody in there 12 hours a day, every day, or six days a week. I, I don't have that concern okay. for day-to-day -day operations. Yeah, there's yeah, someone else who's got their hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed that. Uh, at Fortune 152 Westbrook Road in Whaley, I'm speaking solely for myself and not for anybody else in the room. In fact, um, I've not discussed these thoughts with anybody else in the room. Uh, I don't know what you want to do about granting a variance or not, but I do want to say, since this is being recorded in minutes, in form of video minutes, that I, I can't let it stand the idea that not complying with the bylaw for 32 years is in any way an argument that the bylaw should not exist. To me, if anything, it's an argument that we should have informed what a question of why we haven't enforced that bylaw during the entire existence of the institution and why we've not either required that institution to pay for what is mandated in the bylaw if the, if the town cannot provide it on its own. It, it is simply not a logical argument in favor of not having a police officer present to say you failed to comply with the law that's required of a police officer to be present. That's my point. What's council coming on that? Well, Council, I, I don't know what uh, basis the, the bylaw has been, the, there hasn't been a, a, a detail officer required. I, uh, I think uh, it was but, an unknown. Well, but, but your bylaw doesn't allow for variance, and I think that the reason wouldn't necessarily be, oh, we haven't done it for 32 years, so we're not going to start now. I think the reason is it's been going on for 32 years. We haven't needed one. Therefore, with respect to the variance, there's a, there's a track record of this isn't a, an establishment, and, and again, it's changing, and, and, it may, and you may be able to revisit it, but it has seemed to work without the literal enforcement here. They're actually trying to right the ship here and ask for a variance. The variance is going to allow you, and they've provided for, allow you to require a, a, a security person there that the chief has 
has approved. So what they're, what, what they're doing is, in, in a sense, kind of trying to, to right the ship and do it right. So with, with all due respect, counsel, mm -hmm. and you are counsel for the town? Is that I am counsel for the town. All right. Um, it seems odd to me that given that you would be saying that it's OK for an institution to violate the laws of the town. I'm not saying it's okay. And, and, and so that the fact that you may argue that it's not needed, and if the select board were to agree, they might want to grant the variance to implement it in a different way. But given that this is currently the issue of the town, and now that it has now before the town is in their knowledge, it would seem to me that the legal advice to the town would be to enforce the bylaw starting now. I, I think that that's what I said. The, the bylaw allows for a variance. They're, a, they're asking for a variance. And what I said, you asked me, how could you use 32 years as justification for not enforcing the bylaw? And I said 32 years of non-enforcement actually gives us a history to inform us with respect to a decision made on the variance. It is certainly up to them to deny the variance and request and require a detail. But these guys are coming in here and asking for a variance under the bylaw. So they are asking for compliance with the bylaw. And the issuance of a variance is <clears throat> compliance with the bylaw. I'm going to make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Second. Aye. Aye. Oh. Vote. Vote. Roll call. No. Um, in favor of closing the hearing. Just yes, close the hearing. Unanimous. Does that close both hearings? Because we really yes. mix them together. Can we do that? As you, you can close. I think we, you, we, we, we opened both hearings. We heard evidence for both hearings. I think you can close both hearings. But I think we ought to just make, make it on the record. Okay. That was the uh, closed hearing. Motion to close the liquor license hearing. Uh, second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to close the adult entertainment license hearing. Second. Vote. Aye. 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 Hearings are closed. Now we go through deliberation time. Deliberation time. You're so inclined. Well, I, I, I don't. Unless we get to my thought, and I only have this thought because I. Happen to be the chair, for better or worse, um, is that we go through these conditions and we put some specifics to the conditions. And then at the end of the conditions, we vote on each of the licenses, and then if we choose, we can vote on the variance request or we do not have to vote on the variance request, depending upon how we feel at that moment. I, I, I suppose if you deny the, the entertainment license, then there would be no, then there would be no need to, right. but I would suggest that if you are going to grant a license, that it makes sense to act on the variance request at that time. And I would also suggest, just for clarity of, for the public, that you that you take each license separately at this point. Yes. I know we've kind of blended yeah. the two because they do blend, but now I would suggest that you deliberate on the transfer or the entertainment license, but you make it perfectly clear to everyone that's what you're doing, and then you separately vote. Okay. I, we will then deliberate on the liquor license first. Um, assuming that the original, the, current eight conditions are conditions we want to continue. I don't see any reason to bring those up. Yeah. Okay. Um, the first condition 
and this is recommended by town council is that we set a maximum seating capacity it is currently at 95 it is it is co it is done by by code um, if anyone wants to throw out what, what they think but I you know it, it's it's by professionals who have cited that number can, can I just be here briefly absolutely I, 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 I think that you can certainly have the ability to set a, a capacity limit lower than that but you got to have a rational basis yeah. for doing it I, I, I just don't think you can as, as we discussed before you got 60 parking spots therefore I'm gonna knock it down to 60 people in there I I don't think that that's necessarily yeah um, so yeah. I'm gonna suggest we keep that at 95 as is currently Sure. Okay. Or, or are you suggesting that we strike the entire thing? It no. Be no. No. I, I think you can you can determine it at ninety five. Maximum seating capacity at ninety five. And and and, and, uh, and you know, you'd have to ask the applicant because I don't know what the current capacity is under the state building code. Is it ninety five? It's ninety five. Yeah. So we're using under the under the premise of we're using the the current building code. Uh, manager and all servers employed by licensed establishment shall attend and successfully complete the tip awareness training. Uh, immediately upon hire or expiration of certification. I, I think that's a given. Yeah. Copies of all alcohol awareness training certification shall be maintained by the licensee. I think that's that's a given. Okay. Um, no alcoholic beverages shall be served within the license premises during the 30 minutes preceding the hour stated on the license at which service of alcoholic beverages must cease. Um, and the alcohol license just to, is till one o'clock. The alcohol license request is to one o'clock, which is the same as it currently is. So there's no change there. Although the alcohol license is asking for the addition of Sunday, okay. so it would be from. So the last call would be at. I would suggest that the last call be one half hour, twelve, um, eight a.m. to one p.m. On weekdays, including Saturdays and Sundays, from 12 or 1 p.m. to 1 a.m. That's the existing license. Did he just say this is that Sunday? Right. So I would suggest that using the existing license as our hours of operation, that include, the, but now expand to Monday. That should this be approved, that the last call be at 12:30 a.m. a half an hour before closing. Council, you got something? What? Am I doing something wrong? No, no, you're not. You're doing nothing wrong. Okay. But the interplay between, and I know we're we're trying to keep it apart, but the interplay between the entertainment license and the alcohol license, the place is really going to close at two. Well, if we, we keep have it not, two, we, if, if we, we keep we, it at two, we haven't right. made that decision yep. yet. Yep. 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 So. so I, I'm gonna go ahead. Paul. I, my concern is not only this one, but some of these others on here. Uh, do we have these conditions on other venues in town? I don't know if I uh, well, state. I know. Again, I'm dating myself, but I, I know that when I was a server, there was a there was a a, a town code. I think it was City of Northampton. I can't imagine it was state, but it could have been. That said, we needed to have last call at X time, and that everything was off the bar by Y time. And if we weren't, we were in violation, we could get shut down. And they did walk past. Okay. And it was not just for one establishment, it was for every, and you guys can speak to this in Boston, but it was for every establishment in town. So do we have this for every establishment in town? That has a we, can, license? we can adopt that. We can, if we don't, we will adopt it. But, but is it there today? Do other liquor licenses, alcohol licenses have these conditions? I don't believe so. And all that? And I, my guess is the reason that's never been addressed is that we don't have any bars or restaurants in town that stay open till well, one o'clock in the morning. Well, wait, wait, yeah. Doesn't stay know. open till one o'clock in the morning. Doesn't well, have close to staying open until one o'clock. What's that? Close around nine. Close around nine. Right so that that's well, why that's that, that doesn't exist because we we've, we've never confronted this. How long right. is the diner open to serve liquor? Eleven. Eleven, I think. Is it eleven? Yeah. 
but it's a fair point that we should add it to to the bylaws. I don't think this is the right venue for it because we don't want it. If this is granted, we certainly don't want to treat these guys any differently than right. we treat any other establishment. Right. That's what my concern. Right. Yeah. So I, I think that we need to set it at. I'm going to suggest we set it at at 12:30 and all everything off the table by, you know, 1:15. And that we should anticipate having that as the same bylaw for any other establishment that decides to stay open until that hour of the morning. Okay. I'm not sure bylaw is the word. Well, perhaps it might be not. Regulation. Regulate uh, code. Well, yeah. And again, I don't know what the the, the nor nomenclature would be, but um, all tables and in, in, in classes and classes cleared by 1:15. All customers must be off limited pre off premises, including the parking lot, within one half hour of the hour stated. So, well, for now, that would be two thirty. But we need to address the entertainment <coughs> request. So we're gonna let's. Well, can we push that until we discuss the entertainment? We, uh, you, or do we? No, well, no. I don't think it's uh -huh. a, a, a should be a foregone conclusion that the entertainment license is going to go. I, too. I don't either. Well, I'm not. Um, and this particular thing would mean everyone out of the building and out of the lot the lot by one thirty. Because it's with respect to the the time at which alcohol beverages can must can we put this condition at one thirty unless the entertainment license is at requ as requested is granted to two. Council, um, we might be able to word it differently, and, and that is that all customers must be off the licensed premises, including the parking lot, uh, within one half hour after close of the establishment. Which, if it closes at two, then it would okay. have, they'd have to be out of there by two. Right, because it doesn't it doesn't pertain necessarily to the alcohol on the tables. Okay, and why a half hour? Why not off the premises? Well, if, sooner than two, you know, if it were to go to two, which is not a foregone conclusion. If last calls at twelve thirty, and I'm just using a time frame here. If last calls at twelve thirty, um, they close at one. You know, logistically, you you don't usher. Let's say there are forty people okay. in the room. You don't usher them all out within a minute. So, okay. giving one fifteen, I think, is a, is, is legitimate. Um, no, no employer or business owner in any type of management capacity shall consume alcohol in the premise prior to going on duty or during any respect. That's, that's a given. No alcohol can be served or consumed by anyone on the premise before official opening hours that's, or after closing out official closing hours. That's a given. No patron should be permitted to hire to bring alcoholic beverages onto the licensed premises for the purpose of being consumed there. Yeah, and let's, well, again, speak up if you have a problem with that. I have a concern there with, eight, well, first, maybe F should be during during opening hours. I mean, do we care if somebody... Well, there's no container law. So if somebody's yeah, in a parking lot at 9.30 in the morning having a beer? Yes. Yes, we absolutely do. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, yeah, and these guys would care, but it's open container law. And it's okay. also, you're not supposed to be drinking in your car. The only, only question, opening, well. the only question that I would have is, could this condition specify hours. that whatever security is there needs to be monitoring the parking lot for for this on a regular basis, <laughs> or isn't that necessary? Okay, but don't doesn't E cover F already? It says not consumed before official opening hours or after be in the building. closing. That's in the building. And, and, and that's more that more you typically pertains to a bartender who decides to have a beer while he's counting his drawer. It's illegal. Does it happen? It happens, but it's illegal. So E pertains to the to the building itself and F is to I guess you could say the parking lot. Yeah. The premises. Yeah, and I'm and I'm assuming that they're going to, the person at the door, whoever that is, is going to be making sure that no one's bringing a six pack in instead of buying a beer. Okay. Um, 
But I, I would like to add there that the, whatever the security detail is yet to be determined, they have the responsibility to strictly police the parking lot for consumption of alcohol. Again, and I'm using it because I just, dumb luck, I happen to drive by. And I could even cite the, the, the type of beer it was. So, um, and, and yeah, okay, I'll leave it at that. Um, so I would like that added. Um, G, it's kind of the same thing. Same as kind of F, is it? Yeah, although it, it, it makes sure that people are not drinking alcohol in the smoking area. Okay. Manage, G, yeah, go ahead. G covers a situation where they would purchase yeah. drinks inside the building and carry them outside. And carry them outside as well, so. right. Yeah. And it covers a situation where patients bring out their own alcohol and all right. the premises. Yeah. yeah. The manager, and, and again, so better safe than sorry. Our, our duplicative of. Yes, H and I are dupl duplicative. So, um, I would. What about any from? From oh, um, added to this, from the from the adult piece that I think should be on both. Um, these aren't lettered, but construction of an eight foot high wall made of masonry product, such as cinder block and including a fire exit door, which shall be monitored by employees around the perimeter of the current footprint of the outdoor smoking break area to replace the existing chain link fence. So as to dampen that section should, I think should be included in the alcohol license. Because that has to exist. And I understand that these, they don't want one without the other, but if we're doing this right, that has to exist regardless of what's going on in the premises and what kind of licenses do they have. <clears throat> like I, I think I said earlier, I like to see the words and maintain. Construct and maintain. And, and maintain. Okay, yeah. That'll be added. Eight foot high stockade fence, essentially the same, the fence that goes along the, the perimeter of the, or the, between the parking lot and, and um, the neighbors to the south. Uh, and maintain. Yeah, and maintain to prevent persons from entering the wetland area between the premises and property of abutters and also for noise factors. Um, I will. I was looking at that and thinking along similar lines, but I just thought. Everything under for the purpose of promoting security and safety at the premises, there's like a whole number of kind of bulleted things. Install the video, install the um, exterior lighting, the fencing, uh, and so on. That wouldn't kind of all of those be things we would want in both in the in the liquor license as well. Yeah, so, I, I would agree with that. Um, it just it I didn't feel like pulling one of those out was. Was I, I couldn't pull one out as being more important than the other. So others. it's 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 video surveillance. It's what else? Um, uh, the exterior lighting fixtures to increase general visibility. Um, the installing the fencing between the licensed premises and then constructing the eight foot high stockade fence. Redirecting the utility pole mounted spotlight and terminating all parking within the parking spaces along the western side of the parking lot. That we discussed earlier. Yeah. I, I would agree with all those, except for I'm not sure that we can. The utility pole. The utility pole, hard. because it's just mm -hmm. it, 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 as much as I, I think we as a board working with everyone should yeah. work with EverSource to see if they would make that change. We can't. These guys. That's out of these guys' control. No. They will do that. My four board alignment. They work for EverSource. They will do that. The customer. Somebody's paying for that light to be on, and you can have it directed anywhere you want. The law is starting to traffic signs, you know. Okay. Okay. I'd like to just make sure I'm in the parking area. We talked about uh, yeah. that. Yeah. Are, are we, yeah, we decided. We, I think we've decided the number of space. I, I was about to throw out a number. Yeah. Honestly, because I think we need to. Yeah, yeah, we, that we, needs to be said. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm going to suggest that uh, this be. Four spaces removed 
those four, the two? The two are, north and the two at the, at the intersection. Okay, so where's your... You're, you're talking about okay, these, these two. Yep. And, and those two. These, these two. Yep. Those two and then those two. As, uh, did you circle those on that? Yeah. As indicated on the. On a Google, Google Map. Map, Maps document of Clubcast. And we'll put that in the record. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What's, what's circled is actually more than. Four spaces. Well, and I just heard that other way. I didn't yeah. think so. Or hardwired it if you want. Yeah. 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 Um, Okay, so we're talking four spaces. Yeah, okay. Also included in the alcohol license, in the event of any disturbance, fight, or other altercation between any persons at the premises, the licensee shall immediately contact with the police department and no neon signs or internally illuminated signs shall be permitted. I'm going to give this to, to you, Brian, for the public record um, and as part of the notes. Um, so the, 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 the item about the sign, no neon signs, illumination of signs permitted on the premises and the licensee shall comply with all applicable town and fire laws and regulations relating to signage. That'll be in the alcohol piece. Um, and the ones that I just mentioned also would be in the adult entertainment piece. Yeah, we'll, we should go through those. What's so, that? We should go through those separately. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we will. We're going to do that right now. Well, let's, take, let's wrap up this. You, you're thinking we vote yes. on the, before we bring up? I, I, I think it would be cleaner. Okay. Okay. Well, do we, we can vote, but we also have to sign the license, right? Tonight? Well, I don't know. Well, it's, I don't typed know. it's not typed up. No, you don't have to sign one. No, just vote on. And we, and we will issue the, we'll, we'll issue the decision with the condition. And then this one goes to ABCC. Right. And this is just alcohol. This is the all alcohol. It's just the it's section the, 12 one. Yeah. I'm entertain a motion. Uh, we'd entertain a motion. I would make a motion to uh, add these conditions to the license. To approve the transfer and of to, the license to. And, and to approve the transfer of license with those conditions added. Okay, and all the conditions will be uh, on, one, on one sheet. Yes. All combined, combined on, on one piece of right. under the alcohol license. Under the alcohol license. Okay, I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is everybody? Real. For the adult entertainment. Um, All entertainment and performance activities shall be restricted to the stage area of the premises as presently existing. Um, by my read of this, if the owners opted to expand the stage, and I don't even know whether it's possible, um, they would have to they would have to come here before this board to to discuss that expansion. Hours of operation shall be Monday through Saturday. I would not be in favor of expanding the hours at this point, especially given that these are folks who have not been in this particular business uh, before. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not in favor of expanding the hours, especially given that uh, they came to us saying they were not trying to change things. Not trying to, you know, expand a lot. They were just, you know, trying to, you know, take over an existing one. I would not be in favor of going to two right now. Uh, not certainly not at this time. Uh, I, I am, I am in an agreement with you, Joyce. I, I, I also struggle with 
for all those reasons. I also struggle with, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm in agreement with that. So right. we're, we're looking at Monday through Saturday, 12 noon to 1 a.m.? To 1 a.m. Okay, that's fine with me. Okay. Uh, this license is not transferable. So anyone, <laughs> yeah. much like this situation, um, this is not a transfer situation here. This is a granting of a new license. Um, I don't know whether zoning would allow this or whether I, and again, I don't want to overstep bounds, but am I allowed to make this, or are we, excuse me, allowed to make this license applicable only to this property? And that if, if, there was an interest on the owners to move property, move their business to another property in Waverly, that this license would not be applicable to that property. Yeah, this would go with, if they want, if they tried to open another establishment. No, if they tried to, if they tried to essentially move. Well, to relocation. Well, that's what I'm saying. If they yeah. tried to take this establishment and move a mile down the road, no, I think they would have to do a whole new license. They would have to do a whole new license. Yeah. Different premises. It's all. It's, okay. a, it's a redo the analysis. So we don't have to put that in. I, I, okay. I, I think you don't need to put that. Okay. In. I, I didn't go to law school, so I'm just making sure. I apologize. So is the license for the property or for the owner? The license. Both. It's non-transferable, so it would be both at this point. Transferable to person or to property. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah, it's certainly not transferable to a different property. Right. But no. the new licensed person would have to come in and, and uh, you know, yeah. transfer. Okay. So it's yeah, okay. And, okay. And, the, and the application yeah. does have the location. Okay, I'm just, I'm just making right. sure. Okay. okay. Uh, licensing shall comply with provisions of Chapter 62 of the Waitley Code on adult establishments. Um, until we vote on the variance, I think we stick with that, and we need to... Yeah. The, the the issue is if this board, and I don't know whether this board is going to vote on this tonight, but if the board chooses to not grant the variance, um, it, 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 it becomes incumbent upon us to begin enforcing that immediately. And again, I'm not saying we're prepared to vote on, on that variance tonight, but I, I think either way, they're going to, if you grant the variance, you're still going to be compliant with Chapter 62 of the code. Yeah. Yes. Correct. So. Yeah. Correct. But the current owner does not have a variance. That's the, the point he might be making. That, that is the point I make. No new dancers or other nude entertainment performers of the uh, performers of the opposite sex may perform together at the same time. Um, I guess I would prefer to take up the next one first. No more than how many persons shall be shall perform at the same time. Do we know what the norm is? Uh, I don't know independently of what anybody. Well, uh, you, you closed your hearing. We can still ask the question. I, I, mean, so I, I think you can still give us input from that. Sure, sure. There, there, there are there are two stages available. And there might be two performers on each stage. There could be four performers at a given time. Is a norm. I, I guess I'll just bring in the street norm, but okay. Well, they're very large stages. So right. So certainly an industry norm. And there's plenty of room on the stages for two people. <coughs> the, the, the stage is twice as long as your table. And deeper, obviously. Yeah, and deeper too. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of room for four people. It doesn't say anything about more than one stage. It says the stage area. Well, I think the stage area it could be multiple stages. It's an area. It's not, it doesn't say the stage. It says the stage area. So I would consider that as a, as a foot. This is the stage. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the, the yeah, long, the long. Plural, I was surprised because if there's really two stages, then I would make that a plural. And I think most people who speak English would make that a plural. So it took me by surprise that there are two stages. 
given everything that's been discussed. So well, obviously, absolutely. You know, we would never ask the question. There are this issues. is our language, so we can't beat them up. But this is our language. Yeah. And 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 I'd say there, on one stage there'd be two performers, and on the other stage there'd be no more than three performers. It's 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 a it's a, it's a, it's a stage that's thirty feet long. Well, the third owner said one is the moment of birthday. It's what they saw. I, I honestly don't think, if if we grant this. I was in there, there's more than one. If we grant this, I don't think, to my mind, it matters to me who or how many are up there. I don't, I don't. It, that's that's that, I'm not sure that's what's, relevant to me. Well, what sa safety is probably uh, I, I, right, I, but I'm just not an expert. I have no idea. I I, I agree, and, and I, I guess I would go by what they're saying. There's five. They we'll create a culture of responsibility yeah. within the club. We'll they're gonna them. they're gonna know a lot better than we are, Jonathan. Go I, I agree. That's what I'm. So, so, so let's go by what they're suggesting. Okay, we'll, we'll this put is five. a condition they're gonna live with. If they can't live with five, well. Yeah. Can we hear from council? Mr. Chairman, these were these were suggested. Yeah. Um, you certainly don't need if, if you don't believe that they're appropriate. You don't need to. You can even strike that right out of there. And you know the touchstone here is safety, um, safety both to the public and to the employees. So if if you believe that, as you just pointed out, that you're not sure that it, that it really matters, you, you can certainly strike that. I mean, just these were suggestions from yeah, town. Yeah, I appreciate that. Of all the things, and I know I've been specific on a lot of these. How many people actually? I guess I'd, I'd go along with what town council is. Okay, so I would I would just say strike it because just none of us know. But then going back to the one before that, do we, do we still want that? I I, I just but why do we care about don't that? Don't care. You do cannot we? have any lewd or lascivious behavior going on. What the gender is up there just doesn't matter. Better, better. So I, I would take that out yeah, personally. Yeah. Joyce, would ch chime in. My, it's in the current, the condition on the current license. Is it? And, yeah. Um, and I'm not inclined to. Okay. That's fair. Forward. Again, I don't care. So that stays. That's fine. No presentation of pictures, films, videos, or other visual depictions or simulations of any acts which are otherwise prohibited on the premises. This would mean that on Sundays, because there's no live entertainment, you guys could, I'm not saying you would, I'm just, you guys could show a video of Friday Night Thailand. I don't think so because it's, uh, it is prohibited on the premises on that day. The live entertainment, the adult entertainment is, would that be considered adult entertainment? I'm just, I don't know. So what is that? He, he, he's saying that I, I read it like you like you read it. Yeah. That is that it's, that, that um, picture, film, videos, or other uh, visual depictions or simulations of any acts which are otherwise prohibited on the premises. Sunday, it's, it's prohibited. So okay, you can't. Okay, da the, the the dancers can't dance, so you can't have videos of dancers dance. Okay, all right. The license shall maintain on the premises a current list of all employees which shall be provided upon request of any town of Whitley Police Officer, the Select Board, Board of, Health, Board of Health, Building Inspector, or any of their authorized agents. Fine. Licensee shall not permit any disorder, prostitution, lewdness, or any illegal activity on the premises. Yeah. Okay. License shall establish, maintain, and enforce written policies regarding the following illegal drug use, activity related to illegal drugs or prep on harm prevention of sexual harassment of employees. Um, I would like that to reference the document that the applicants have submitted in terms of their in terms of their policies and, and, and steps to prevent those things. Um, and that So they they basically have a, have a st established at least in writing the it, policy that this condition is referring to, and then the condition is, you know, maintained and enforced. And then it can't change, right? Right. Okay. And I, 
Hello, Brian, have you officially received this? Well, you just got it today, right? Yeah. I, I guess I would put a date on it. It was officially received on June 27, 2018. Fine. Licensee shall notify the select board within five days of receiving notice of any judicial or administrative proceedings which may affect the status of the license. So, as I read this, and we would obviously get an update from our police chief if something happened that, you know, or, or we would be notified from the ABC if you guys, on a, on a, on a sting operation or something. Um, but the state police wouldn't necessarily contact them. <coughs> That's just the way it works. So I would, I I would say that works, but that you guys need to do it because you can't assume necessarily that we would we would receive that notification because of communication that just doesn't exist. All the time. License shall coordinate with the Whitley Police Department in the development of a formal security plan for the premises and shall submit the completed plan to the Chief of Police for approval. The plan shall include at least the following elements, a floor plan and layout of the premises, provisions for a security check of all patrons entering the premises, limiting customer entry so as to maintain compliance with the certificate of occupancy for the premises under the State Building Code, procedures for protecting employees, patrons, and neighboring residents from rowdy or disruptive conduct. Um, I, I think that's important. Jim, you're okay with reviewing that, I, I assume? Absolutely. Okay. On the date. A date. Um, time frame for that. Um, I think that should be by the time, and I don't know how the transfer works, whether there's, whether, it, let's say we were to grant this today, tomorrow, whenever. The new license. The new license, that means you guys would be operators immediately? No. 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 I think now, electronically, uh, your board sends this the, on the liquor license to the ABCC. Yeah. And they go through a process notifying DOR to see if Mr. Thomas and taxes are paid up to date and they report back. Uh, ABCC assigns an investigator who will uh, go out and meet and investigate the new proposed <coughs> owners. Uh, at a certain point, if they approve it, they will send it back to you and that's when you issue the new license. Okay, so. I would say that's the liquor license, but that's the adult entertainment license. That's up to you. Yeah. That's up to us? They basically go together and um, within 30 days of obtaining the licenses, I think it would be appropriate to meet with your chief to get a written plan and to come up with that. So you're, you're suggesting the date be within 30 days of getting to the license. Was that a plan of hearing? Yeah, that's what we're hearing. Within 30 days okay. of, of the transfer. Well, this isn't a transfer. This is no, a, I, I guess the new one, yeah. But they're going to go, yeah. I, we, we could do it quicker if you want it. Well, within 30 days. So if you do it three days, that's fine. Right. right. We'll do it as soon as we can do it. Okay. Okay, but within 30 days. Yes. Purposes of promoting security and safety of the premises, the license shall complete the following improvements no later than ins installation of the new video surveillance. And we reference this in the in the yeah. alcohol, but we're gonna we have, read we, we gotta to make sure date on that. The same language installing a new video surveillance system for the premises, providing the capability to view and record at least the following all areas of the parking lot, as well as the entrance exit points of the parking lot on Christian Lane and State Road, the outside smoke and break area. All building entrances and all inside areas accessible by the public. As a, as, may I just interrupt? Yes. As allowed by law, because I don't believe you can put surveillance in a restaurant. Okay, right, as allowed by law. Fine, thank you. Install new and or modified exterior lighting fixtures to increase general visibility and to increase the existing lighting of the outside smoking break area in order to deter criminal activity. Um, as, and again, is it, safe, is it safer to say as allowed by law there as well? I think, no, I think that's fine. Okay. Construction of an eight foot high wall made a, of a masonry product such as cinder block and including a fire exit door which shall be monitored by employees and around the perimeter of the current footprint of the outdoor smoking break area to replace existing chain link fence so as to dampen the noise coming from the smoking break area and discourage conversations between persons in the parking lot and persons in the smoking break area. 
that is in vote. And the, the date is not clear on that when um, those improvements have to be made. <coughs> deadline for that. Is that before they can reopen? Or is that? I would think so. So. I would think so. I, I just, the neighbors are going to want it. The neighbors aren't going to want to. Right. We have the police department within 30 days. We right. just be within 30 we'll be within days. 30 days. We can't get it. We should get a building permit. We're not, we're not going to be getting construction until we get a light. Are you going to be open during construction? Or is that it? Uh, no, I think in fairness, we'd be open during construction. There's just a process to anyone who's worked with clients. I'm not going to physically do it myself. Right, right. I have to hire a contractor locally. I can't bring my construction company down here. We'll hire a contractor locally. It will get the permit. The defense definitely needs a permit. Um, yeah. You know, then they'll do it. We can hire them right away, no question about that. I'd love to get it in right away, you know. You could say that uh, the applicants have proceeded in an expeditious way. Uh, or initiated within 30 days. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. Pay the money, get the, they can get the building permit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, like within? Nine, I, I, I think well, this year would be start the process. Within. But but I, I don't want to leave it as open-ended as that. It seems open-ended. So well, they just have fine. to start with fine with that, I think. That. Um, I don't know if we can talk right now, but. Um, you can. Okay. I mean, add I'm fine with 90. That gives me 30 days to get hire the person, get the the contract. I don't know how backed up they are, but I can imagine it's not a lot of work. It's a week of work to do the soundproofing. I'm, I think I'm a. I think I'd rather go 60, but have the process start within 15 days. Okay. Again, whatever you, the process takes. I don't have a network out here. If labor is readily available. Not spent, yeah. so to your point, it's not that. But we're yeah. we're trying yeah. to we're trying to approve something yeah. that's, that's, that's yeah. like forty two years. Like yeah. In, yeah. in Boston, if you hire someone, see you in one hundred and twenty days. Right now, okay. Okay. so, so, so can we can we make it just a little bit? Can we make it like within sixty days of the issuance of the license? Of what the law completed? Well, that is the date goes with all of those improvements. Yeah, the sixty days within the issuing of the license. Um, I, I would, I would encourage you guys to be even, if, if this goes through, <laughs> that you guys are even more, more vigilant, yeah. because they don't have their lawyer. Yeah, no problem. Okay, I would give you within sixty days. Yeah. The defense company I saw here, a big one, right? If it becomes impossible, yes, we'll come back before the board. Right. right. And discuss what we what are your have with yeah. the three defense companies, and they can't do it for ninety days. Yeah. For the purpose yeah. of promoting, uh, and that applies to all the all these conditions. Those uh, the the, the things the built installed the new installed all the way down to uh, terminating the parking spaces. Lighting, video surveillance and the walls, with the exception of the is is the is that one post in this the section? Utility pole. They, it sounded like that wasn't actually going to take a long time. No, I know, but we can't hold them to that because they don't control it. I just want to make sure that we're... Well, they can come back and say, you know, and they don't control a lot of things, but... Okay. Okay. Um, fence between the licensed premises on the properties. To block sound and light from disturbing the neighbors, um, we need those are, the same those are the same thing. Yeah, the eight foot high stockade fence. It's the same thing. Redirection of the utility pole. I, 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 that's not totally in our control, but language we yeah. we will use our best effort to apply we, for on the, it on the and utility use our yeah. best effort. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we'd obviously work with you on that. Four parking spaces, the, the, the elimination of the four, four parking spaces, just the same language that was in the liquor license. Restriction of access to the outside smoking break area um, to separate patrons uh, from interaction or visitation with the entertainers. Um, 
The licensee shall employ or retain trans security personnel who have. Um, this one is if the variance is not. The paragraph I'm looking at says the licensee shall employ or retain trans security personnel who have crowd manager certification for the state fire code. And who shall be on the site during all hours entertainment is offered in one hour before and one hour after in order to maintain order and safety and deter criminal activities such as illegal drug or prostitution activities and disorderly conduct by patrons. The security personnel shall, shall regularly walk the property to discourage loitering and discourage persons from congregating the parking lot. Um, I would. I don't think we should say about whether it's a variance or not. We should say that if, if it's a, the police detail would fulfill that requirement it's a requirement regardless of how it, right right it's a, it's a requirement regardless of how it, it if, whether it's someone under their employee okay or whether it's someone who is essentially under our employee that's fine and just like the liquor license uh disturbances fights altercations on the premises shall immediately be um be, be uh we, you guys will contact the way the police department and then the signage in terms of uh, applicable town bylaws and regulations, just like the local license. Okay. So those were as stated. As stated. Yeah. Um. Any final conversation? Um, um, on this or including the variance? Not including the variance on this. Not including the variance. Um, Council? Would you like me just to use this Yes, please. I, I, don't, I don't know if it's a, in my job to. Yep, uh, no, please do. The licensing, and this is with respect to an entertainment license. The licensing authority shall grant shall grant a license under this section unless they find that the license taken alone or in combination with other license activities of the premises would adversely affect the public health, safety, or order, and that the concert, dance, exhibition, cabaret, or public show cannot be conducted in a manner so as to protect employees, patrons, and members of the public inside and outside the premises from disruptive conduct from criminal activity or, or from health, safety, or fire hazards. B, prevent unreasonably an unreasonable increase in the level of noise in the area caused by the licensed activity or caused by patrons entering or leaving the premises. Or prevent an unreasonable increase in the level of pedestrian or vehicular traffic in the area of the premises or an unreasonable increase in the number of vehicles to be parked in the area of the premises. Um, as you see from the from the list of conditions that you have there, I think that we've kind of targeted each one of these concerns. Um, so, just just so that the board knows, this is this is a little different than most licenses. The liquor license it doesn't have those words "shall issue," so this is this is a little bit more strict. The the, the, the court will probably look to us to prove if we deny this license that the conditions wouldn't have protected the interests here. And can you give an example of how they, what what that threshold might be? If if uh, the threshold for what 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 a court would find yeah. appropriate for you, you said the proof would be the the the, the 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 proof would need to be made by us. It would, it would yeah. We, we so would what have, type of? Well, we would have to show that, for example, putting up the, the masonry wall or the lighting or whatnot would not be sufficient and there's not no condition that we could prevent put on here that would protect the interests of the um, of the public or the or the employees and if we denied this mm -hmm. and the courts and, and 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 we were challenged yep. in court. What is the potential damage to the town, <coughs> other than legal fees? 
Well, with, with respect to an appeal of your decision, it would likely go, I believe, go to the Superior Court for under a cert claim. They look at the record, and if the court determined that you, that, that, that you improperly denied it, it, has, it would have two options. But I, I think the court could actually just grant the permit on its own, and then you have to whim of the court because they don't necessarily have to, to, to grant it with conditions. Or what I think would more likely happen is you'd get a decision out of the court that said, look, you didn't do this right, and remand it back to you for, for a further hearing and, and, and uh, consistent with the court's decision or guidance at that point. Um, <coughs> okay. I mean, actually, it would go right to federal court. Well, he, he would, yeah, I, I mean, I'm talking about a straight up appeal of your agency uh, of this decision. Now, what I think what he's telling you is that he would sue you for civil rights violations under, uh, under uh, the agree. First Amendment. That, that, that issue is out there as well. Uh, but the threshold question then would be, did you properly deny it? And I think if you did properly deny it, his federal court case would go away. And he could always go back to Superior Court for the he, issue? He, he would do both. He would do both. And then you pay our case. I, I, I understand we, that. If we, we lost a yeah. civil rights claim, we would, you would pay both of them. Okay, thank you. Which is mm -hmm. a lot of exposure. Here's exposure. Um, do I hear a motion one way or the other? I would prefer to do that. I guess we've talked about a lot of conditions and we've found a lot of pages here. Whatever we d decide, I, I guess I would like, you know, if it's appropriate to have Brian feel free to put all these together, well, he's probably going to do it anyway, to make sure all the conditions here as we stated, because, you know, we're, we're talking of a lot of conditions. So are you uh, saying, are you, are you saying the motion will be subject to? I guess subject to verification of all conditions that we agreed to by town staff or town administrators. And, and by council. And it is on the public right right council. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I guess I would like to see that, so. Yeah. Well, you just they're here. Right. Yeah, Brian. Well, yeah. Oh, okay, I know, but you gotta so you are right. Right. I think you talk about it. Yeah, when we it. sign it, it's gonna be something you can prove. Right. Right. Well, so assuming presuming. And, so sorry. why don't you Fred, if you want to, you can make a motion and then it can be corrected the language can be yeah. corrected in terms of subject to Okay, I make a motion that we we approve the uh uh, you license license okay, we're done with discussion. No, I, 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 not necessarily. Okay. okay. I thought you were. I, no, I, 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 I've been, it's been, I've just been thinking about it. it it's not going to be a popular thing to grant this license. Um, I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. I think um, misinformation number one was that everybody I ever talked to said that this entertainment license goes away when Jimmy retires or dies. And, and maybe bad on us for not knowing that that wasn't really the case, but everybody I've talked to in town about this had thought that was the case. So it's not a popular thing to grant this license, and I think people don't necessarily understand that kind of what the, the trade-offs are that we are having to deal with here. And I just want to make that clear to anybody who's watching that that it's not something that anybody does lightly. We're not just saying, oh yeah, that's fine, and not really thinking about it. not putting a lot of our own time, we've spent pre-meeting, primarily on these license, licenses with hearings. Um, I've gotten letters from people who feel there's a big threat they can't identify themselves because they feel like they would be, they would have some retribution. Um, they, I, and, you know, that's just, a, and, it, and in a way that's, that's kind of hearsay because they haven't told me who they are and all. But, but this is just something that has really, um, I want it in the, in the record that this is something we've really struggled with and we've really thought 
a lot about and really looked into what our options are. And this is like the second meeting where we've had counsel at our table. And, and I want people out there who are watching this to know that we work really hard on this to, to keep the town's best interests at heart in this. I, I haven't talked to anybody who says, yay, yay, I want a strip club in town. I, I haven't heard that from anybody. Um, oh, okay. So when, 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 now, now I'm hearing somebody who's, who, who wants it to be there. Um, they, I, would, I would say you're, you're in the minority of, of what people in this town think would serve this town. We just had an economic development meeting before this. Not one single person said, yeah, let's get, let's get more strip clubs. Okay, I, I, and I just put that out in answer to all the people who have contacted me and wanted, and by whatever means, that th this isn't just a sit down and roll over. This has really taken a lot of our time and energy and thought and, and not just the three of us, it's taken much of Brian's time and uh, and it just I think that needs to be said to everybody that this is not something that we have taken lightly and that we've really looked at this from all angles as best we can. Okay. Thanks. I guess I would I would like to say that I I haven't heard personally anybody objecting to the to what's been happening there for the last 32 years or what will happen in the future from from my contacts in town, I guess. Uh, and I personally, since I've been here the last 10 years and even before that growing up here, known that that place has been there and it hasn't <clears throat> really been uh, an issue, uh, a hazard, uh, whatever you want to call it, disruption to, to the town. I think people have learned to live with it uh, for the last 32 years, and even before that, there was adult entertainment at the Waitley Inn. I mean, it's Waitley, I guess you could say, is, is maybe known for adult entertainment, whether it's, it's good or bad. People have learned to live with it. People have been here for, for years. They've kind of accepted that. Uh, and, and without hearing, you know, any objections lately from neighbors or, or people saying that it, it's a nuisance, a hazard, uh, people are being shot, shootings, or whatever. That's, that, that's kind of a low bar. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I guess. Now, come on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that is, uh, the board is discussing this. We're deliberating. Uh, and, and I'm just saying, Joyce gave her viewpoint, and I'm giving my viewpoint on this. I, uh, I guess it's, it's, it's been an establishment. It, it's been there not only 32 years, even before that, it was an establishment as, as a restaurant, as a truck stop before 91 went through. I, I've been through that. I've lived through that. I've been there at the restaurant when it was a truck stop before. Uh, to me, this is, this is nothing new. People on the street, people that I talk to, uh, I think feel the same way, that it's, it's just a business in town. It isn't. It isn't a hazard. It's not causing any 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 major crime issues we're having. So, uh, okay, that's that's I, I, my comments. I'll make a motion, but before I do, I, I don't like this. I've got an 11 year old daughter, and we all have a lot of of people who this. There have been people here who have come to the meetings never before in their lives because they don't like this. They don't like the reputation it gives the town, and this has nothing to do with you guys. You guys are nice guys, as far as I can tell. It's not good for the reputation of the town. It's not good for economic development. It's not good on a number of different levels, not the least of which is that 11, 12, 13-year-old girls and boys know what goes on in there, and it's not, it's not what they should be expected. Unfortunately, we have a constitution that says this is freedom of speech. And there's nothing we can do about this. And it's all. But it's the way it goes. And again, it has nothing to do, it's not an indictment on the people who want to buy it. It's not on people who, who, who have run, as these places go, pretty clean establishment for the past whatever number of years. The, the issue is that it's not the business that people in Wigley want to see. But council's right, we can't do anything about it. 
I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't say you couldn't do anything no, about right, it. No, right. You can condition it. Yeah. Yeah. And we are conditioning it. Yeah, that's right. And, and we are conditioning it. And if the conditions that we've laid out here are not satisfactory, um, there's not going to be a better deal. I mean, it'll be so, revisited in, what, January when we issue the mm -hmm. new license, right? Right, Brian? So I'm, I'm going to make a motion to... Uh, Grant, grant this license. Just for clarity's sake, when are we talking about the uh, variance? <laughs> well, is that going to be a, con a condition of of the license? No, the license no. says you, you you go by the bylaw and then the bylaw. It doesn't mean we, we do after. We don't actually have to address the variance today. I'm we've only gotten, we've only had this, this for about a week in our hands, is my understanding. That's I'm not struggling with the variance because I, 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 we've never required it for 40 years or whatever. What, what, what else but would we be asking for for the variance that we don't have today? Nothing. It just gives us time to think about it. We'll slow down the transaction. Yeah, yeah. I get, I get that. I, I get that, but... But you have to understand that, that my my angst about it is not necessarily against you guys. Absolutely. I'm more not for it, but no, absolutely. I'm just more concerned about the existing owners in that regard. Right? Because that's just that much longer before they're in, they're in or out. I will make a motion to um, grant this license with the conditions that we've stated contingent upon final review. I don't know what the language would be, but final review to make sure that what we discussed here is actually stated appropriately and effectively. Well, I, I mean, that, that's fine language, right? I mean, I think what it is contingent upon the, the uh, conditions that were, were discussed. Right. And, and how it's written, we can, we'll, yeah. Right. Okay. We can work to that. Okay. okay. I'll second that. All those in favor? All right. It's really hard for me to say in favor here. Uh, I guess I'd like to abstain. I, don't, I, I, I guess I can't say in favor. Okay, I just personally, I can't. Two nothing vote, one abstention. With regard to the area, you had 12 days ago. I'm sorry? 12 days ago, I submitted the variance, and I told you at the meeting I was going to hold variance last meeting. And you heard from your chief. That's, that's true, but I, I don't. I don't see what we're going to gain by delaying it because the license already has in there the security plan that the chief is going to get within, what, 30, 30 days? And it lists out the conditions that you're going to show the chief that apply to that. Uh, yeah, again, it, it, well, it doesn't address who is going to monitor the security, whether the var whereas the variance does say that. So I guess it is a little different, but I don't see what additional information I we think, would use. I think the big difference between granting the variance and not granting the variance is that the security person if it's a police detail, reports to Jim, oh. and then to them reports to us. Okay, that's who they report to. If they're an employee of the establishment, then they report to the owners. And I think we might have better reporting if the person who's doing the security is reporting to the municipal authorities. Well, I, I think we, we need to rely on our police chief to be involved. In I this. think what our police chief is said to, I don't think this does not square with what Jim and I had talked about the other day when I asked him about it. So I, I, I don't think you should rely on this as being uh, a reliable. Um, hey, George, can I ask a question? Does that put our chief no. liable for this man that he doesn't know? No. He's got an employee. I, I, 
An no. employee who reports to Jim is very different to me than an employee who reports to the owner. That's, that's his responsibility then, right? That the employee is his responsibility. We have um, to rely. We have to rely. Yeah. We have to rely on what the chief said tonight. He's liable, Jim. You should sleep in the bylaws. I, 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 bylaws allow for variance, and he's supposedly showed in writing while the attorney is shown in writing that and we've heard directly no. from the chief but is, this is the attorney for the people for the applicants right okay and i having read this and having talked to the chief did not think they were together well, chief is here he can he explain that, the difference that but he he you know it talk. sounds to me like he's assuming that he would have to pay for it out of his current budget and that would not be the case. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. But because he says, you know, we wouldn't be able to, um, does not have the personnel to provide. Well, then if there's more money, then there's more personnel can be hired. You know, I'm really concerned about who reports to who here. So I think we should not start as a default saying they don't need to be somebody who reports to us. I think the default should be to report to us and then maybe come back in a year or whatever time period, and say, hey, th this is how things seem to be working out. We can put a time limit on it. We can say, uh, but, but I don't think the default should be we grant every variance that comes to us right off the bat. I think that's, that's not a very logical or reasonable thing for anybody to expect. If I may, briefly, yeah. Yeah. the company, uh, we, we have hired a, a security director former chief of police from Franklin County. We take the security of that facility extremely serious. I take it very serious. I just know we're, you know, as far as people leaving there intoxicated, we're, we have a plan coming. We have a former chief of police as a director of security. Uh, so I feel and like we're And yet he reports ambitious. to you and not to us. But we're responsible to the town ultimately too, well, right? I mean, so. Well, let's, let's ask the chief. Is that a problem? Is that a problem? The security person can, can stop one at a time. The security person can report directly to your chief. Mm -hmm. You can't deny this arbitrarily, 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 capriciously. You have your chief say that. Well, let's hear what the chief says well, yeah, about, right. about somebody who who he approves. Whether that's going to be sufficient, he already said it. I think what the question is. Well, yeah, I, order, I, I understand that. And I'm looking at him. If he wants to say something, he can say something. If he doesn't want to, order. Order. if somebody has a question, I mean, I, I don't want to just throw out an opinion. I mean, if somebody has a specific question, I've given, I tried to clarify the conversations that, that were had, um, whether it absolutely reflects what's on there. Do you think it does? To the, to the point where the everyday operations that I didn't have an issue with professional security being there to monitor the, the facility during that time. <coughs> I think I made it clear to Joyce that my concern was if something else happens, I told her specifically that the everyday operations for the 12 hours, whatever, however long it's gonna be per day, that, that I'm not so much in favor for that. I'm in, I'm in favor for if there is something in addition to the everyday operations. And Joyce had pointed out that there are some exemptions to that, but I haven't been able to find any, so I'm not sure what, what no, they, those exemptions might they, be. They, it has to be when there is the, the new dancing. So if you're saying that you're gonna have new dancing from 12 o'clock in the afternoon until one o'clock, like every single minute of that time, yeah, then- that's 13 hours a day. The, right, uh, my understanding from previous hearings was that might not be all 13 of those hours having adult entertainment. So, so all you're saying, so for, for 13, 13 hours of a day, then, and I'm, I still stand where I stand. I, I don't think the default should be to grant a variance. I think that that needs to be, um, I mean, it's, it's a bylaw we should have been, we should have been enforcing all along. And it's, what would happen if? What would happen if we? We can revisit it. We could put a well, time. Well, I'm, I'm wondering what would happen if we if we granted it for 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 90 days, and if they and they come back and and we review the history of the establishment over the 90 day period of time. 
what if we do the reverse? What if we don't grant it for 90 days and see what happens? It's to be a good operator and really create a culture of responsibility, please. Council, what happens if we don't grant the variance? Well, you have discretion to grant the variance or not. Um, I, 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 you know, you do have your police chief up here saying that that that, that he's not necessarily on. I, I'm not really sure what he said. He said a couple of different things that he's not necessarily on record of, of requiring a police detail there at all times. Um, so to the extent that that's it is what he's saying i mean it does leave us open and, and mr lesser is sitting here telling you he's going to sue you he's going to sue you he's going to sue you um, uh, yeah. arbitrary and capricious that you didn't grant the variance even though your your police chief may or may not be in favor of it um if you have concern the the granting of the variance it's not a light switch it's not you got to have the detail or you don't um, and your concerns are, I'd rather, and, and, and I understand those concerns, are legitimate concerns. I would rather have the security guy who's getting, you know, report to, to my person rather than report to their person. Um, if you have concerns like the chief does about special events, although I, I don't know, you know, you got yeah, 95 you capacity. Well, right? you got 95 capacity is 95 capacity. If you're going to have in light of the current situation, if you're going to have Stormy Daniels there, you might want to. You might want to have. You know, you 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 can condition the grant of your variance to say, once a week, the security person there has to meet with your chief of police to discuss what's going on. You can say that in the event that you're going to have a big name entertainer there, dancer there, that would be. Uh, that, 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 that may draw in a, a larger crowd. You can say the security uh, 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 supervisor has to meet with your, your chief of police and let him know. And at that point, your chief of police can then make the call as to whether or not he wants to put on a different detail. So there's a, there's a variety of things. You, you know, your, your variance standard here is, is almost is, is pretty open. So I, I think it's left up to you to creatively do it if you want. I'm doing it. Why is why is why is this arbitrary and capricious? It's a code. The fact that whether the chief of police agrees with every code or not, the chief of police's job is to enforce the the, the, the codes of, of, of the town of Whateley. So I, I guess and and it and I want to take your advice, but what what makes following current code arbitrary and capricious? <laughs> You know, you're asking me to apply in the public uh, for a, for a possible lawsuit. Um, there, there's there, there's nothing that makes it arbitrary and capricious, except for you'd have to look. Did you ha do you have a reason for doing what you're doing? These and, people haven't run this kind of business okay. before. I think that's a fact. I think that's something that we that was established in the very first night of the hearing. Okay, I wasn't here for that, but I'm just saying so you you got to have a basis for doing what 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 you're doing. And that's why I can't help but wonder whether setting a 90-day, you know, they haven't run it before. If with with security detail reporting once a week, whatever it is, I don't, I do not want this town to get sued. I, ju I just don't. I mean, the, Paul, you're you're shaking your head. You're the chair of the finance committee. What is it? What does it do to our 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 bottom line if we get sued and we pay court costs? I well, I don't have the figures in front of me, but. Based on what Joyce has said, these guys have never operated this before. They don't, for all we know, they don't know what they're doing. So I would rather have, the town is more protected with an actual police officer in there. But like you said, for a year, if everything's good, then let them roll over and bring in a private concern. Um, but, you know, when it when is. When you say report to, I don't mean report to as in meet up with and chat. I mean, Jim's their boss. And somebody where Jim's not their boss is not reporting to him in the same way that an employee would be reporting. And it can't be a matter of dollars and cents inside, because they got to pay somebody to do that anyway. Whether they pay a cop from Conway or a cop from Waitley or a security guy from 
wherever, they're still paying. So, I guess I don't see the, the relationship that, okay, you're maybe new and, and, and have never done this, how that affects the quality of the police you're going to have there. They're going to said they're going to hire somebody that is trained in police and security, the same as Whaley Police Department is. Now, I'm not saying the same standards, but the same person or the same person you're going to get from Deerfield that's going to come and, and be on, on details. Uh, I don't see how that, that affects your 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 uh, hours of, uh, your your business here uh, background. I, I guess you're gonna you're gonna follow a standard for security and, and make sure that person is is aware of that and follows the rules. And I guess the other thing, Jonathan, if we're if we're concerned about this acting on this, we we've got in here a condition within 30 days for the for the, to meet with the chief on a floor plan. Provision security checks. If we tie this to, to this arc to this section of the conditions of approving the license, why can't we do that within the 30 days? I and I know days is too soon. I, I, this is the point. I don't. We're making this decision based upon a very short window of thinking this through. But we're going to get this information, or the chief is going to get this within 30 days. That's our condition. And at that time, we, we can meet with the chief and see if he's uh, comfortable with, with all of these conditions and talk about the variance at that time. I, I don't know what, what else you, you're, going to, you're, going to get, you're going to get that would convince us to support the variance other than your police security being present in the room. Uh, I don't know. With all due respect, the, the chief's exact language was with regard to everyday operation, professional security is sufficient. You can't just deny this and backhandedly deny the First Amendment rights. We're, we're not you, the first Amendment. Uh, you are. Mr. Okay. Chair, do you have to order. Can, can I finish my sentence? Do you or do Hold you on not now. operate Hold. by Robert's rules of order? Hold on now. No. Hold if on. you do, the point of order comes first. Go ahead, Matt. Point of order is who is the deciding body for this? Is it the police chief or is it the select board? Select board. If it's the select board, then you are not asking the police chief to decide. Um, decide. Where? You are asking the police chief's officer's advice regarding his opinion regarding a bylaw. And when I was last in civics class, and maybe I was the last person to be in a civics class, my understanding is under the town meeting system of government, the townspeople, when they assemble, are the legislature, and they legislated a bylaw. The bylaw has an allowance to grant the select board as a representative to grant a variance. But because this is a law, you do, the law as such is, not, is never arbitrary and capricious. There has to be a reason to grant a variance, not to not grant a variance. That was the point of order. Your counsel, can I finish what I was saying? Absolutely. What your counsel was saying, in order to deny a variance, you must have a basis in fact. The only testimony you have heard has been from your police chief. The rest of it is, I don't like it. Okay? You said something pretty reasonable, which is do it for 90 days. It was not working then come back and revisit it. <clears throat> I'm going to say what I said a long time ago. This is why I want a little bit of time on this issue. I'm not prepared to take a vote on this. If you guys want to take a vote on this tonight, you guys can make a motion. But I want to weigh the realities of this. And I understand what Paul is saying, but a court case could get very costly. Okay, are you, in, in your thoughts of the uh, postponing this, Jonathan, are, are you thinking of a time period when this would be acted on? 
It would be at our next meeting. At our next meeting? Which is in, what, two weeks or whatever? Okay. Uh, is that yeah, going to make I, I, I mean, Yeah, I haven't had enough time to really figure this out. Whether do you need a reason to grant a variance or do you need a reason not to grant a variance? I, I don't know. I'm not the attorney, but I'd like more time to think about it and get more input from people other than our chief of police. We have the chair of the finance committee here gave some input. Some of the public has given some input. Um, I, you know, I, I feel like this is, is being rushed in and I, and we, we took um, a good deal of time on the licenses and this was a really important part of the license discussion about the, the following the, the bylaw 62.8, which is having the police detail there, or then, you know, and, and variance being brought up at kind of the, you know, uh, the a after it was brought up by me at the last meeting, then this idea of a variance came up. Um, I, my understanding from, from our town council is that we don't have to act on this tonight. Mm -hmm. But I know, I understand it should be acted on soon. And having a little more time to digest this and understand it and talk to more people is probably to our benefit and better for the town. And that's who we're supposed to be looking out for. I just want to say one last thing. When it was introduced yeah. on an open hearing, uh, the town council said earlier and no court is going to deny the reality that there's been no security from the town there for the past 16 years and there's been one call because of criminal activity there every year that's an extraordinarily low number i've never seen a bar or club that has had fewer calls as few calls as that you know, I've, I've done a number of these hearings, and the numbers are 10 times higher usually, and, and, and licenses are granted. You just never see a number like that. One criminal call every 365 days? No, except the ones that come from our group. We'd like to thank Mr. Cosmos for that record. He's had a great record here in town. It's, he's stayed under the radar hasn't done a lot of crazy advertising, hasn't had neon lights up. The guy's done a great job in running that business. And that's why there's been this marriage, so to, so to speak, between the town and that establishment. He's going, he's leaving. Castaways is over when he passes that off. And it's a new establishment. It's a new strip joint. Brand new. Mr. Chairman, I, I, when I was talking, and, and council may have quoted me accurately, but when I was talking about using the 16, 32, whatever years of history, that was with respect to the to a deliberation that you could do as to whether or not a variant should be granted. I did not say that because of the 32 years, you should grant the variant. And I hope that, that it did not come off as that. But that's something that you can look at. Um, and the counterweight to that is, what this gentleman just said, new, new people who are going to possibly ramp up uh, advertisement and the like. These are all things that you can look at. Right. And, and, and my point was that because I want to find out and, and learn from people who are knowledgeable about this what is potentially going to happen in a court of law? Well, it's it's it's, it's very difficult to. I understand that. Um, but but what but I, you could but, you, but 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 people who know what they're doing can oftentimes make a pretty educated guess as to how the finding will come down. What I would suggest is also with respect to the variance, and I don't believe I had that in my packet. Um, 
I, I don't know exactly. I, I heard from the gentleman here today that they said they had hired a former chief of police in Franklin County. I don't know, did you have that information before you? Decided? They had mentioned, I think, in the first hearing. Okay, but any yeah. names or, or, or any security Monday. plans or anything that were provided to you that would be able to inform your decision on the variant? Was it from Montague or Shelburne? Shelburne. Shelburne. I don't know the person. I don't know the person, but. I know him very well and I've had discussions with him about. about but he's stories. not your employee. He's not, I'm just okay. pointing out there. Again, I can only give my opinion. I'm not the deciding factor, yeah. so I can only. Police officer from Deerfield wouldn't be his employee either. He'd be his contract. Please. How does that work, Jim? When you when you when you bring on a, a, a detail, are you responsible to that? Per, or is that person responsible to you, yes. or they're yes directly? Yes. Okay. And if you don't like how they're performing their duties, you terminate them, or you don't issue them a new detail. Correct. It could be a new person every time, every could day. Be. There might be multiple people on the deck, so he's managing how many people. That's crazy. I am. Manage 20 officers. You want to say 30? I don't think we need to make a motion to No, we're, just, we're not going to add to the table it or whatever. Up well, doing act. Okay. I, I suggest if you're going to hear, if you're going to take it up at your next meeting, you would need to make a motion to continue the, the hearing on the variance to a date certain. Do, are we having hearing on the variance? I don't think we opened a hearing on the variance. Do variances require a hearing? Well, I, I don't think it was a hearing. Well, uh, I, I do think it was a hearing. I, I do think that you were, that you that you opened it. We didn't post a hearing. I, I, I will make a motion that this be an agenda item for the meeting scheduled for. We have to figure out our schedule, but July, uh, July 11th. July 11th. If we keep following on Wednesday. If we keep right. Mm -hmm. I can't be here on can't July 11th. Okay. I'll be in Lennox. Can anybody from your firm be here? I'm sure I can get somebody if you want. David? Yeah, it was here last time. <laughs> okay. So we need to set a date for it? I just did July 11th. July 11th in time is what, 6? Six? 6 o'clock. <laughs> So that needs to be posted as a public hearing. Is it? Does it? No, it's have just a the hearing on the variance. The it, variance is on my the understanding agenda. is that you you didn't have to have a hearing for a variance, so it wasn't really a hearing. But I'm willing to be corrected. Brian, could you find out? Or is that in our town council? Is that after the advertised as a public hearing? Yeah. I don't think you have to notify your butters and the like, but I would advertise it as a public, as a hearing on the request for a variance. The other thing we could do, is we could schedule a special town meeting and let the whole darn town come and give their opinions on whether this should, variance should be provided. To Nat's point, if they're the legislative body and we're just the administrator of that body. People really want to go in that direction. Aren't you the town fathers that make the decision for all of us? No, we are We are not. The legislative body is town meeting. Now yeah. it's correct on that. But the town body gave your board the authority. That's right. The decision with respect to the I, I'm, I'm just saying, if you know, I. but for now, these are not plebiscites. And I don't, and we're not. We are currently following the law. I understand, but if you open, if you go into town meeting, it's making it a plebiscite on what, on what the public wants. The courts have been really clear that you don't do that. That's perhaps, perhaps. Hmm. Uh, my frustration should not have exposed itself in flippancy, uh, but it did. <coughs> I didn't think it was flippant. Okay. okay. We'll we'll have this discussion on the eleventh. What else do we have, Brian? Eight fifteen. Eight fifteen. Thank you. Thank you.
I'm writing a story on that one or another. If you want me to be as accurate as possible, I know you're amending some of that language. Right. Really, the only thing I want to make sure I get right is that eight foot wall. Of, I just want to make sure the language is specific in that, and I know you didn't change the language. Of that. So, the language on the eight foot wall is in terms of what it's made up of. Yeah, I just want to be able to yeah, quote it correctly. Right. That's really all. So, we'll, we'll, we'll be issuing an opinion shortly, and, you can, and it's a public record. You might certainly get up. You want something for tomorrow's news or story? So I'm just trying to get the lid down accurate so that there's not something else that's wrong in the public record. Yeah. This is for your own mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think we have any copies on any language. We need to need an eight foot wall that is different. Construct and maintain. Right, you added the word maintain. Yeah. And maintain. Correct. And maintain. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I guess you could send us uh, Brian an article if you wanted to. My deadline's 11:30. Oh, okay. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, I mean, um, if you guys want news to be accurate, yeah. that don't come to me the next day. And say, oh, oh, sorry, oh, but, but it's it, it is I'll a gate and public. it's a wall and it's around the smoky area. Right. And then there's a different right. eight I, foot I've been fence the whole meeting along the. I, I, I just wanted to be as accurate as possible. How much more so accurate can you be? I just wanted to see the language, so I, was right. I could quote yeah. verbatim. But I understand you don't want that. Well, <laughs> I mostly want to go home, but <laughs> it's been a long, long day. All right. You guys are late. We have an appointment at 15. Yeah. Our apologies. Mr. Herbert, you're here to discuss a host community agreement for marijuana cultivation uh, at 149 Christian Lane. What are you I'd just like to add the fact that I'm going to formally say that you declined to show language. Just going to add that. Look, it's I don't it's have really the language. Late. We're not we're not All trying to have a, a we're, we're not trying to be have a, a, a we want an amicable relationship, obviously, but. We, we repeated that that several, several times. I don't think you're gonna have it inaccurately in your report. Everything you've written so far, I think you've gotten it right. Because I come, and, thank you, but I, and, I come to you to make sure I have the, the, the tiny details, but I'll be vague on it so it's not inaccurate. So, thanks. What do we got, Brian? We're post agreement. There it is. So Joyce and I, with input from the chief and I think Paul, we put together this template agreement that we talked about last time. We shifted off to Urban represents Urban Grown, and they suggested or proposed some changes to the agreement. Um, if you want to look at those quickly. I mean, I think those are the same ones that you emailed earlier this week. Yeah. Or uh, maybe it was like last week. Yeah, those are the ones. That, this hasn't been changed at all. This is the one that uh, right. the applicant said. No further changes from there. Yeah. Right. Um, we'll, we'll go quickly over these. I know this is still the last piece to your puzzle, right? Yes. Before you submit your application. So um, if we could take a couple minutes to think about this. Well, they're tired brains, I think they would appreciate it. Um, the first, the second whereas clause, the applicant test to operate a duly licensed marijuana establishment. Cultivation in wholesales is the only change there. No issues, right? Cultivation in wholesale sales. Second whereas. Good. No issues, right? Joyce, you good? Hi, I'm good. Uh, page two. Agreement to renegotiate, and I, if I miss something, please correct me. They had the language no less than 90 days prior to the expiration date. 
agreement the parties agree to review the determination of community impacts and associated community impact fees in the, to negotiate in good faith with respect to applicable laws for an extension of the host community agreement for another five year period. The, the, the substance of that change is instead of a new five year, it says an extension of the <coughs> host community agreement for another five year period. What's the, what's the substance of that change? That is the, <coughs> the guidance that sort of comes through from the CCC. Yeah, you're not really starting a new establishment, you're extending the prison establishment. <coughs> the establishment as opposed to the agreement? Or, or is that how the... The establishment is a cultivation okay. establishment. I think it's the, uh, primarily because the host community agreement is a required component of the licensure of the facility. So without that, then a continuance of the, the facility isn't due to the license. Yeah, but it, it, doesn't, um, it doesn't imply that we can't negotiate terms and change any terms for whatever extension. The extension doesn't have to be verbatim the same. Right, it, there's still opportunities. There's still opportunities. Yes. So when it says extension of the host agreement for another five year period, you're not trying to say you can't change anything. Because that, to me, was the only kind of slight way somebody might interpret that. But I just want to make it clear, that's not how we're interpreting that to mean. We're not interpreting that to mean that the, uh, you know, five years from now, if we want to change something in the agreement, we can't change it because it's an extension of the host community agreement for another five year period. So. That, that's, I just want to make that one. Yeah, the language is still community impact fees and to negotiate in good faith. Right. Yep. So, so, because, yeah, so that negotiate, just because it appears earlier in the sentence, doesn't mean it doesn't apply. Right. Okay, good. You good? Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Okay, yes? Yes. I, sorry, but I couldn't hear Yes. Right. Uh, paragraph six. They propose crossing out increase in demand for fire services and H increase in the demand for educational services. And what was the what was the rationale for those? Uh, the rationale for the fire is the, the if the greenhouse burns, it's just the plastic that's going to burn, and no engine will get there fast enough to do anything with that. Um, or or the plastic once it starts to burn, it's gone. But the, the fire department might not be coming just to save the plastic. I mean, there's the fires can spread. There, if there's a fire, the fire department comes whether the whole building burns down and is destroyed or not. They have to. They, they have, have to, to respond. respond. So, um, so that's that's okay. We can leave that one. Away. It's, just, it's not going to increase. We've had a greenhouse fire before. Five minutes is done. They're going to come put it out. Boom. That's it. Yeah, but if, but they still have to respond. Exactly. And that, so that we still have the cost. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. If these are, just to be clear, these are for existing greenhouses, so it's as though there were a fire there today. There would be the same services that would be required today to service those greenhouses. So it's not, there's are no new structures that are being constructed. It's existing greenhouses that are on. At this time, no. If, if, if it's the same structure and we're not increasing structures and if cultivation of marijuana does not increase the chance of fire. If it's the same structures that's there. I know, but the inside, inside is, is what's inside any different. No, because if we got tomatoes inside there, the marijuana is just the same thing. Just that, you know, yeah. what, else is in, what else is in the greenhouse that may I mean, I, I, I think the I think the the way the, the, the law was originally written, we're allowed to ask for in, you know increase in demand for fire services. It was something that we're allowed to put in there. I'm so, I'm fine taking it out. But, but I mean, we, yeah, is there, is right now we don't really have anything to So, and you want me to take out? Ben, I'm fine with leaving it in. Right. Doesn't matter to me one way or another. Fred, 
Do you guys really care? I, I, I said take it out. Leave it in. 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 It's fine with us. Okay. These guys are setting precedent for everybody else. Leave it in. Leave it in. Yeah, that's the other thing. Why are we taking out? Demand, increased demand for educational services? We won't be in, integrating with any schools or families on this. Yeah, but the host agreements that we have have to include an education component. We, we, this is a brand new ball game. We need to make sure that, that, that the children and youth of, of, of not just Waitley, but surrounding communities understand the hazards and the dangers. Of, of marijuana consumption um, and educational educational stuff is really intense. Yeah, I don't disagree with what you're saying, um, but I feel this is more direct. It should be more directed to retail stores than to cultivation. I, I think it's all, we're an agricultural community. These kids know what's being grown in here. I, it really needs to. Could I make one suggestion on the fly? Uh, in, in the first part of that, uh, number six, where it says the following negative impacts, would you be okay with a striking negative impacts? Just leave it at impacts. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Is that okay with the, with the board leadership? Yeah. I mean, it's spin for that. Yeah. Does it make yeah, it's fine. Yeah. You guys okay with that? Yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be the most. Who did the impact be? Yep. The applicants paid the town quarterly over the term of this agreement, 3% of its gross wholesale sales of marijuana, marijuana products on it before the 15th day of the following, close of each, following the close of each quarter. And they added the town shall document the full cost basis of the 3% community impact fee for state law, general law, chapter 94G, section 3D. Lacking this, the applicant, and this relates to the, the a couple. Of these items below has modified the charitable donations, education, and programming fees since the 3% community impact fee would be considered to cover the, ch the charity for both the charitable donations and education and programming fees. So, if I could just quickly relate this to 9 and 10, when we originally drafted nine charitable donations in, in 10 educational programming, um, we have mandatory language in there as to the, the applicant shall make these contributions for charitable donations and educational programming. What they're proposing to do is that they would agree to the 3% so long as 9 and 10 um, become permissive in the sense that it would be up to the applicant um, in their good faith and good intentions to make those donations. And let me say, we want to be able to contribute to those. Um, the shell may be a little hard when we get started, so um, uh, um, I, I think I'm okay with this, but in the same way we would provide to you the cost base, the full cost basis of the three percent. I, I think that I think that's off the table. I think that the the part from the town shall document that. It, I think we should just strike that. Strike what? I'm sorry. The on, on seven community impact fee. Um, there's a first sentence. The whole second sentence needs to go. The the town shall document the full. Yes, yeah, I think that it doesn't. Well, it doesn't help the town for one thing, um, and it sets a really. I mean, this is this is a first time through on a document like this, and it sets a really bad precedent for any subsequent documents. Um, it puts a huge burden on the town, um, and it's just a 3%, and it's, what, it's the maximum that the law allows. Um, that there's gonna be impact, yeah, do we need to spend like all that time trying to figure out what the impact's gonna be? That's, I, I don't think that helps us, and, and I, I'd just like to strike that second sentence altogether out of there. But uh, it wasn't strike. in our original draft. Then you would strike the third sentence as well, then. Uh, lack of this, the applicant modified because lack of what? Because it has nothing to do with Yes, everything. correct. It's the second and third strike sentence. Yeah. Strike that whole thing from the town shall document all the way to the end. And then how do you feel about nine? Well, the difference between shall and may. <laughs> Is, is pretty big. <laughs> yeah. um, 
it I can understand about after sales and cash flow are established because I think when you're first starting out, maybe five thousand dollars is a lot of money. But it's when does it sales and cash flow are established? When does that happen? That's that's harder to say. So um, the only I mean, our only recourse on any of this is five years down the road. You know, five years down the road, we look back and see what has happened, and that's where we, we start with the, the next host community agreement or extension of a host community agreement. So, and, and the, that said, this is also the first one we're doing, and we know there's at least one other, probably more than one more, uh, marijuana establishment coming down the road. And what we put in this one will affect what we can do for the others. So because it's a precedent, um, I, I, I don't know that it's very smart to change shall to may. Um, if, there's a, if there's another way to, uh, to soften it that I can't think of that wouldn't make it so that every other establishment after that would not be compelled, then I, I don't, then I, I'm, certainly, I'm certainly willing to listen. But um, I, I, and, but I, and I definitely understand about the after sales and cash flow are established. And I, and I don't know how to be flexible on that without opening the door to every, anybody who comes into town can just, oh yeah, they don't really mean it about that, that uh, contribution to um, public charities. So in, in a way, I feel a little bit at a loss. So w what about if, what about if you kept, we kept shall, but ended the sentence located in the town of Waitley and struck, struck the with a target goal of 5,000. So there's no target goal, but they shall contribute after sales and cash flow. They, they shall contribute, but there's no monetary. Well, because then there's no, there's no monetary, one penny. So someone who, who maybe comes in with a tier three, tier four, tier five, one penny is all they need to do. You know, I, from a PR perspective, that would be a big mistake on their part. And we would have, and it would take and us I'm, five years to get around to, to being able to take care of it. So yeah. that's that's my struggle. I, I don't I don't feel. I'm just thinking they would have industry pressure with the right PR. But with the what do you say with the target goal? That doesn't right. mean actually five thousand. It could spend yeah. a, a thousand. But right, and that's why it was originally worded that way. Was yeah, it, it, it's a little play on words, but it's shall contribute, and this is your target. There, there's not much recourse if they don't make it. Right, that's sort of their target. So, um, so because of the wording with the target goal of five thousand per year, means the difference between shall and may is not so important. It can be either way, yeah. Because I really, because I, I, I mean, I really, you guys are local. <laughs> this is exactly what. So, so I, I really want to be able to work. And and again, the the target of five thousand dollars. It's just the target. We have. So if you say shall and you can't hit the target, you can't hit the target. Yeah. So it, it, we we would live with the shell if we can input with the target after. Okay, I'll be actually a counselor here who might have some insight. I, I, I've, I've negotiated a couple of these already. Um, you know, in my opinion, um, unfortunately, the way 9 and 10 are written, they essentially obligate these guys to do nothing. Um, the applicant, in addition to any community impact fee specified herein, may contribute. After cap sales and cash flow are established, well, so that, we the red is what they put in. Yep. The brown, the black is what we. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, so as, I, I liked what you had in there. Shall contribute on an annual basis to a public charity or benefit of, of its choosing, located within the town of Whateley, with and with the target goal of five thousand. Again, gives you even as it was written, gives them nothing. What I have seen the way these have been done. If if you. If you want to help them out, you do it two different ways. You lower the, it, and it's not a target goal. It is a shall contribute 3,000, 2,000, 1,000. 
and if and I've had a couple of smaller communities that have local people coming in that are worried about we don't know what's going to happen how do we get established we've allowed them to make these contributions starting in year two of operation so by then they're up and they're running and they should be able to make their contribution <coughs> understood this is a this is a common concern with a lot of the establishments that we can't be contributing five, ten, eight, whatever thousand dollars right out of the gate. So the communities that I've talked with have oftentimes started it in year two, but had a hard you gotta contribute three thousand dollars. Interesting idea. Yeah. Well, that. I think or, would, or, I mean, would that set could we could we start in year two and as council uh, a suggested ramp up from year two to a max of year five by year five? Did that work? So you're yeah. saying two thousand in year two, three thousand in year three, four so thousand. Two thousand in year two and then every then, year after an additional one thousand. And that means to a every every five. other place that comes in here is gonna want the same deal. That's that's my that's my one that's my one <coughs> um, yeah. So um, you suggested three thousand. Would you entertain three thousand from the second year on? We're not going to say that we're going to stick with three thousand. If we have good cash flow, we will be more generous. What about what about starting with three thousand, but then and then based upon a review of? Well, yeah, because we we review it in five years. But we can review their their cash flow every year. We yeah, that, yeah, that we actually. Do get a, yeah. um, we do so get an account. You review yeah. the gross sales, every right? Year. Yeah. Right. But we don't get the cash. Flow. Right, but based upon gross sales, we, we, we couldn't we insert language that that had the figure based upon some formula around gross sales. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to do cash flow necessarily because if. No offense, but if you guys are just lousy business people, you know, <laughs> not, and you have lousy cash flow because of it, that that's not our problem. You still get your three percent. Uh, oh, right. Gross sales. Right. I'm just, you know, you take a look at the at, at the gross sales, and based upon that, we 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 <clears throat> determine whether they need to ramp up more quickly to the five thousand dollars. And we have well, I mean, it's sort of like making it a percentage instead of making it a mm -hmm. Paul, have you seen a business plan from I know. people? What's the projected, uh, you know, for years one, two, and three? What's your, uh, what's your gross sales? That would ramp up. What? It, 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 it's really hard to do. And you don't have a business. Well, we, we have projections. Um, so what are your projections? Projections are pretty good, and we'd be able to do the five thousand. Uh, say that again. We'd be able to do the five thousand. Um, no, uh, starting year two, and leave it at five thousand. I'm I'm really worried about backing off on things because we're setting the precedent, exactly. and it's and yeah, and and it would have to apply to people from out of town as well. But that could be revisited. From, the second time around. I mean, that could be revisited the second time around. You know, so and and want, to me, the amounts are linked to, this is a tier two. If someone came in with a tier four, I think the amount would be different and we'd be justified in, in treating that differently. Um, and, and so so that's, but exactly. I understand my hesitation is not any yeah. animus towards any of them. No, I understood. I mean, as, as you suggest, what we're trying we're to do is it that way. Min <laughs> minimize the early financial burden on the business at the start. Let's start with your fear and then ramp it up. You know, just, from February on there on out. Just, just, just you know, zero to five thousand. Just let it be zero in the first year, and just let the that provision start in the second year. It just keep five, it simple. It remain five thousand for the. Just remain five thousand. Um, just keep it simple for both nine and ten. Is that what we're talking about? We're just talking about nine. So mine was five thousand. A target of mine. A target of nine thousand. Or five thousand. Yeah. Drug and awareness education, that's again, that's important to me. Yeah. So, what you would be taking out then, you would cross out what after cash flow? Right. We would, we would not have the after sales and cash flow established. We would let every year to do that. Basically, make it a more. So, you would replace that with year two? Yeah. Year, year two. two. 
But we would leave him there with a target of five thousand. No. Uh, that was the amount of five thousand. And make the make it be an amount of five thousand. Flat amount, year two. Just year three, year four, year five. But that yeah. was your language right. before. Correct. And we're we're we've been advised by council that might be a good thing to change. So is this a shell or a name? A shell. And then uh, and and we got the target goal. <coughs> Was there any discussion of can this be reviewed on an annual basis? <laughs> this kind, of, this well, I know it's five years for the whole agreement, but these provisions of the impact fee and donations and programming can that be? I, I don't know that they have any incentive no. to come back. There's no, you know, the 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 law is says that they have to come back every five years. There's no reason why they would have to come back. To review things, in the town can't ask for any kind of reviews in the interim. Reopen. We. I. I. Uh, I uh, trying to remember. We're at that meeting of the Green Fields where they were. I mean, it's not unlike you're asking you. So let me throw out you know the five thousand dollar number. Where did that come from? Why five thousand? Why not? Two thousand? Why not ten thousand? You know, where, uh, where's the primarily thousand? looking at other host community agreements from across the state? They were at five thousand. Um, well, all these things are different sizes. So, looking at the sizes and yeah. uh, from other agreements for a tier two, that was uh, the range we were looking at. People were, were saying. But get yeah. Back to, and, to my question, I guess Brian, can that be, can we look at this every year, even though it's a five year agreement? I mean, if year two they're struggling and they're still not producing much, you can come back. They can come back and ask. I, yeah. I mean, I'm more comfortable with that. If year two we pay you the five thousand, you wouldn't need to yeah. discuss it. No. All. Right. Yeah. But if in year right. two we have a problem with the five thousand, yeah, the that, business yeah. isn't doing well for whatever that, reason. Because yeah. I think one of the things that's very unique about this operation is it's not being done like any of the existing medicinal operations, any of the existing retail operations, it's being done at greenhouse scale, at greenhouse level. So yeah. the potential for pest pressure, pest impact, you know, mold, blight, uh, it's more significant and more of a risk with this kind of operation than it is with a, you know, contained Morton building, you know, in an industrial park somewhere. Okay, so, so how do we, how do we resolve this? Because I'm looking at the clock. Yeah, you know, I know, I know yeah, my ride is, is, I don't have to get my ride right home. <laughs> May I suggest that you're making a five-year revisit at the end of the five years? That's what we're saying. That's what I'm saying. If there is... And drop the idea that you're going to revisit it every year, and if I, they find that it's a burden, they'll come to you. I, I, yeah, I, I can't have a yearly review, I don't think. But, but if you're concerned yeah. with this being a standard, I mean, how would we treat others? I mean... How are we going to? We don't know that. Wait, right, no, we, we, that, me, that means we, we, we have, in a, in a way, we have to keep the bar high. I, how right. about, we don't put the yearly review in here, but at their discretion, they can come back to us any time and, 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 and cry poor. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they can, yeah. right? And they can say, geez, it's just not working out, guys. Yeah, I'm crying poor tonight. That's why I like. Well, yeah, but without we the guy, without the that. <laughs> yeah, you don't have the the book the books to to, to be able to do that yet. Yeah. And I'm going to guess you guys are going to do just fine. Thank you very much. So to sum this all up, so yeah. to sum this all up, uh, yeah. paragraph seven. We're, are we striking that? You're striking. Yes, the, the second all third. the red. Yeah, the line. Yeah. I'll Paragraph go. nine. It's starting in year two, <clears throat> five thousand. Just leave it as it was before. Mm. Well, um, year as two. it was before, but taking up the with a target goal, and yeah. let it start in year two. So you yeah. you want to let it let it start in year two. Yes. Five thousand so, starting in year two. Okay. And then oh. uh, and removing the target goal. We'll wordsmith it. You'll wordsmith it. Okay. Right. Ten. That's the same language. You know, essentially, it's the same language for that. Yeah. Is that year two, 5,000? Yeah. Starting year two, three, four, five. Right? Yep. Okay. 
What are we next? 12. Um, about that. Responsibilities to the town to accommodate the installation and use of state of the art security and fire protection systems. It recognizes the applicant will pay for any related cost of any required upgrades to the town's building equipment and or infrastructure. Yeah. Well, here, I think we, ha we, we have to make it clear that this is really only the case of uh, if if part of your security means we have to upgrade something, means just the cost of that yeah. on account of security system right. would be on a computer. So yeah. that's so like, so if on our end we can't receive the signals from that computer, we need to upgrade something here. Then we we need that we need that cost to be on you. That, that that that's my that's my understanding. That's what we're trying to say, yeah, at least. And maybe the language isn't tight enough. I didn't want to get into buying a new fire truck. Oh, well, oh, yeah. Well, uh, I think a fire truck's going to be necessary. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, so, uh, so are we okay with that language? You suspended the security systems and recognizes the applicant will pay for any related cost of any required upgrades to the town's building equipment. So you guys are okay with that. <coughs> Yeah, it sure is. I'm not comfortable with that. Yeah, it was open ended. That's yeah. why. Oh, okay. But whose changes? Those are, those are your changes, right? Yeah. So, how do we want to fix that? If you say well, related to whatever the security system is. Yeah, it doesn't, because it doesn't net right now say to pay. That is struck. What it now says is recognizes the applicant has all the rights, duties, and responsibilities. Of and is deserving of equal treatment with other businesses, establishments, and town of Wakefield. Right over, I'm, I'm looking at 12B. I'm looking at this one. Yeah, yeah, 12B. So, so the, the, to, to accommodate the installation and use of state of the art security yeah. systems yeah. Uh, and recognizes the applicant yeah. has all the okay. rights, duties, and responsibilities of and is deserving of equal treatment. That's not, that's not written anywhere on what I've got here. That's not in your document. No, it says the applicant will pay for any related cost of any required upgrades to the town's building equipment and or infrastructure. Did you take that one out? No, this is the one, no, this is this one, this one is that the, you had sent to us. What, why isn't that under 11? 11 is what the applicant yeah, has the responsibilities of the applicant. No, this is under responsibilities of the town. Yeah, but that we are responsible to accommodate the installation oh, okay. use of state of our security. Okay. But the applicant would pay for, like, I don't know, if it, if it requires a new computer, if it requires a new something in the police station, then that little new part is is on you, so to speak. And that's okay. We're not, and, we're not, and we're not talking about, that's oh, okay. we That's okay. That can be finessed in a way so it's not open-ended. Right. Because when I'm reading because this, it, it doesn't... Because it buildings, equipment, and infrastructure. A computer... Well, security system that's on a computer is... What if it's something along the lines of uh, upgrades necessitated by the... Security. By the applicant's security needs or something that ties it very specifically? That works. Yeah. That works. Yeah. Is that the alarm to wake up in the morning? <laughs> yeah, I'm going home to bed. You guys will forgive me. I'm just letting my family know that I'm not coming home anytime soon. We're almost there. Yeah, yeah we're, we are. Okay. So it sounds like that, that we, we actually agree on that one in principle. Yeah, I But we I, need I, to tighten up the language. That's, to that's all we need to do, yes. Okay. We yeah, don't, that's kind of what I thought. Yeah, we don't want to buy the fire truck. Cruisers are cheaper. Yes, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Got a better case to buy. All right, cruiser. What, what's next? Let's move this along. 13, payment taxes. Uh, the, the language is added. The applicant. In contributing benefit to the host farm agrees that all real property tax on for the property and the reason for that change was like would you be responsible it? for paying property taxes i think what you told me yeah um really uh, that, that as it was written it didn't have any responsibility back to us anyway it was just a statement oh, okay. that property taxes had to be made paid yeah if you just so take that really out of it yeah because if they're not paid, you're in violation of this agreement. That's all. Right? Isn't that no. Scotty's farm would be in violation of the agreement. 
because that's that was going to be like, like I said. This is we're making a a, a precedent here, so that I th because it's in, we put it in the host community agreement because you know, we the, as uh, Urban Growing Inc does not pay property taxes to the town. We're paying three percent to the town. Right. The farm is paying the property taxes. And this is a host agreement with Urban Growing Inc. In so, cooperation so you're farm. saying that if, the, if your host farm doesn't pay their taxes, you're, you're, not, you're okay with that? Or you're, you're, no, I'm not okay with that, but I'm not responsible for that. Right. Well, right, but the, if the host farm doesn't pay their taxes, you're, you're part of the host farm that's in jeopardy because they may not own the property anymore. Well, <laughs> that would be. I'm just saying we that's. We would possibly so, help out the so you, that's so you're saying the problems are these other things, not that they your host community agreement would, would be breached by the non taxes. The host agreement wouldn't be breached, but the farm would be breached and we wouldn't be able to operate. Yeah. Whatever. Well, I mean, do you, you lease the space from the farm? We are going into an agreement with the farm right. that they will get 20% of all of the proceeds of the business. And that farm currently has an agricultural exemption from taxes? 61 AB, whatever C? Uh, um, I, I think that the way this is written is the town wants its tax payment at least on the facility. So your agreement with the farm would have to include that because what we're saying here is, and I don't think you get an agricultural exemption under the statute for the for the for uh, the uh, the cultivation of marijuana. I, I I know you don't. They they exempted that out from agriculture. So at least a portion of what you're they try to put back in. Well, what your what your what your uh, what you're growing is going to be subject to taxation. And this host community agreement says that you agree to pay it. And, you know, so you would need to have something in your agreement with the farm. Yeah, but what, what taxation are you talking about? Real property tax. Huh? Real property tax. It's owned by Urban Grow? Not necessarily owned or leased. And I'm assuming you guys are going to lease from Urban or from your farm. He's not going to be able to continue to keep that agricultural, at least a portion of that agricultural exemption on the part that you're growing. I'll refer to the former commissioner there and say to Yeah, we're going to have to review that. Okay, because it's greenhouse facility, so I'm not sure what. Yeah, you, know, I, you look at the, 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 yeah, the statute, sure what the specifically tax, exempt it out. But what the property tax on greenhouse space? Well, I mean, we, we, we would have to go and, you know, our assessors would just assess that. Yeah. But it's not it's not going to be subject to a sixty is it sixty one a sixty one it's not going to be subject to sixty one a because the statute specifically exempts it. Mm -hmm. So you're going to instead of paying twenty five percent, you're going to pay hundred percent on that portion. And of course, I think you'd have to then look and see whether or not I don't know how much land you own. It might be academic because you have two acres, at least two acres. Five. But uh, I think it's two, but well, there's a portion in there. Well, there's a portion in there for two, but what I'm saying for him is, is that might just get rid of his entire exemption. I don't know how much land he's got. No, it's a small, small percentage. Okay, the square so, footage we're talking about in the greenhouse, the value of that, property tax-wise, it's it's I don't know how you even calculate that. For a greenhouse thing. A tier two. Yeah, I, guess, I guess you guys could. So. We do it all the time. I guess he could. Like a tier two. A tier two, which so we're we're a tier two, which we are, is only up to 10,000 square feet. Then there might be real property tax. Uh, there might be personal property tax on that as well. Personal? Personal it's, property tax. The, 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 the lights to the extent that you use them, the machinery. I, I don't know what goes okay. work. So if we just leave it as the original language by striking the red in contributing benefit to the host farm, that's okay. That's your original language. Does that work? Does that work?
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we, you know. I think that's... 14. 14, it was originally written, this agreement is only valid for the application to operate a tier two, uh, two, two facility, and I think this is good language to add as licensed, in, as licensed and defined by the CCC. And then the question I part of or future expansion to a tier three cultivation facility. So we can make more money for the cow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the tier two It's not automatic that we can go up to a, three, a tier three. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. governed yeah, by the CCC. Could, could knock it out to a tier one. Huh? Yeah, yeah, right. We could even. They, they, they could yeah. 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 Joyce, are you okay with 14? I, I think you know if they get knocked up to tier three, let's come back and talk about a new agreement. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, by by then we should have something really well established. It shouldn't take us six weeks to do it. Um, but I think, for example, because because some of the values earlier on were based on yeah, well this is a tier two. If you go up to tier three, we might revisit some of the the values for the educational and so on. Yeah. So so that that would be my reasoning there. Is I, I, and I really don't want to set. A precedence that you know somebody bigger and better could come in here and really take advantage of. Okay. So straightforward future expansion to a tier three. Yeah. Everything else is fine. Well, uh, then we don't need the. Uh, so we the, don't need the notification part to tell them either. If we're only looking at tier two. Yeah, that's yeah. upper span tier two. Yeah. To the license or to move or expense operations. I think that should be so if we wanted to go to a tier three, you're saying we'd have to revisit the whole thing? Yeah, yeah, that's just revisit the whole thing. Take one night, I, I don't anticipate it take as here. long because, we, <laughs> okay. because we, we, we've been through so much of it already. Okay. All right, I think that's it. Yeah, the only other thing was. Um, I should be down as president CEO or not. Uh, oh, do you need to CEO? No, you just put me down as owner. I corrected that on the one I think. Yeah. Who wants to share the risk? <laughs> <laughs> so, is the board comfortable authorizing the chairperson to sign this? Does it need to be signed by each What we member? actually no. need to sign is. Um, so we can give it to, is this more good? Oh, that's right. That's because the only they thing. They don't actually, this is something I learned. That's the, internal at, to the town. At the meeting was that the okay. the CCC does not collect up all these host community agreements and make a nice library for other people to reference. Wouldn't that be they, handy? Wouldn't that be handy, right? Um, no, they, they, uh, they basically have a form that says, yes, you have a host agreement. We sign and say yes, they have a host agreement, and, and we could keep it secret if only it weren't public meeting, right? Okay. So what do we do? So are you? Do you want to make a motion to enter into this host meeting agreement subject to the changes we talked about, and for the chairperson to sign the agreement and the certification form, or do you want to talk about this on July 11th? That's, I want to get it up our plate. I, I want to get up our plates too. So I would move to authorize the chair to sign the agreement subject to the the uh, modifications we talked about here, or in some case reversal of modifications um, that we talked about here. I think we've we've thought about this and worked on it for probably as long as we've worked on those other things. And these people need to get their business underway while the sun is still shining. So, I mean, we'll, we'll like have you know several eyes looking over it, right? We'll proofread it and, and such before. Uh, okay, so that's a motion you make? That's a motion, yeah. Second. Okay. okay. And you have to say all in favor, John. Are we ready? Yes, aye. 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 <laughs> Not that big on All right. Uh, uh, right. Skip some things. Skip A. So we're yeah. yeah, you're good. We're good. good. Thank, thank you, you very much. I'm sorry. I want to skip this. Yeah. I want to do, yes, thank I you for your patience. I'll see you on the Is that short or is that long? And I guess that can be good. Do this. That's not part of it. Yeah.
All right, um, support appointments really fast, you guys. And there will I not read be those. Updates. I read those all over. I'm fine with the uh, uh, list of appointments. I assume that no one there was drafted against their will. No, those are those, right. are, those are the same people. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it looked like the same people we've had doing those jobs for doing good night. There's, there's, uh, yeah, there's one new one on the police that's not on there, though. Brian. Yeah, she was recently appointed. Yes. Yep. Uh, you or whatever. Elizabeth Unitas. 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 So with the addition of uh, Officer Unitas, is there any? Okay. Okay. So okay. Those, those appointments are done? Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, and we will do project proposal to expand excess deficiency funds. What you is want this? to do liaisons or no? <coughs> you want to do those next time? Let's do liaisons next time. Oh, and add to that uh, Franklin Regional Transit Authority, Richard Tilburg. Yeah. Oh, so appointed. Okay. That's, that was written in pencil. Oh, I added it for you guys before yeah. I copied it. Good. Yeah, okay. Okay. Expending excess deficiency funds. Is that a simple vote. You have a letter in your packet. Yes, I read the letter. Um, okay, Ridge School District, Acting Superintendent. They, they the school committee voted to spend twenty thousand dollars in E and D funds for the purpose of funding upgrades to building security. Um, Apparently their motto is confidentiality, which always gets my joke. Um, <laughs> but they don't want to divulge too much, but it has to do with access to the access to the building that yeah. really should be improved. Yeah, but there yes, there are definitely so, things. Has this gone to other uh, towns? So it's it's I don't know if other towns have voted on it yet. This was just yeah. on the nineteenth. We have forty five days. Um, we don't have to do anything, okay. but if we, we have 45 days to register our objections. Right. Excess and deficiency funds. I don't think I've heard that term before, but does it, is it what it sounds like the name is? That's the equivalent of our, that's their... Their equivalent of free cash Yes, however I'm supposed to say that. Okay. Free cash. Uh, yeah, I, I would not <laughs> object to... Needs to come to us. I would not object to this. We can object to it. We don't, um, I, do we have to approve it, or...? No. Okay, let's move on. Um, oh, we have about 126,000 and some change in their D&D fund, so they're not exhausting it, so they have. Okay. okay. Vendor and payroll warrants. Vendor and payroll warrant. Payroll warrants. Do we have to sign them? Yes. Oh, don't we usually, you know, get them over. There you go, those are the regular ones. There's also a special warrant in here. for a payment of $30,000 as part of a settlement agreement. So I will leave that for you to review and determine what you would like to do. Yeah. That's the which folder? Is that the purple one you're this holding? This is this purple one right here. Okay. It's coming your way. I don't know if you want to have any discussions about it within the without going into too much detail. I don't need to have any discussion on it. Last thing, I think we can, we can put this off to July 11th. We did receive the, uh, the notice to exercise a right of first refusal on the blue school. Um, and we also should have a discussion about the adjacent lot. Um, we have 30 days from the date of notice to inform them if we want to exercise a right of first refusal or not. <coughs> we received that June 15th, so we could talk about this July 11th. You were so inclined. Okay. I, I mean, that's fine. I don't think any of us have. I yeah. haven't changed my mind about. I think, yeah. I think but. I made it. I think I made We've made it clear in many of our past sessions that we're not interested in buying that and taking that all along. So. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ok
So. Right. Okay. What we can do through inaction, let's not worry about doing through action, right? Okay. <laughs> and we'll punt talking about the adjacent lot till the next meeting. Okay. Yes, we will. Motion to adjourn. So the, oh. the accounting program contracts, we have to sign those now, or is that something Make, we can sign next time. Okay. Um, <coughs> 90 days to, um, do you want me to send a request to obey or to extend our 90 day period of keeping these bit open? Yes, please. Okay. Motion to adjourn. I think so. Second. Yeah. Good night. Thank you. Uh